I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. Uh, we'll start off with public comment. Uh, Clerk, I believe you said we have two comments, Mr. Yes, Larry Pierce, uh, and then also we have Mr. John Tomaski. Just wanted to remind you all we, the Board of Commissioners appreciate your contribution <coughs> and your responses and comments uh, to your government, your local government, and uh, we'd just like to remind you we have a new system that I'm trying out and it seems to be pretty effective. So when you hear the, you have three minutes to speak, and when you hear the sound of the music, uh, we ask that you wrap, wrap, wrap your sentence up. So when you come forth, give me your name and your address again for the uh, record. Mr. Pierce, please come forward. Larry Pierce. <coughs> 4120 Van Road, Douglasville, Georgia. You know, sometimes I never know what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. And I had it all planned out last week, and I found out it was the wrong Monday. So, <coughs> Friday, my board of directors at Martin's, I have a board of directors at Martin's. <laughs> you do. Tennis. They said, Larry, have you seen the paper? I said, no. They said, well, go get it. So I went over to Mrs. Liz's office and I, I said, I want 10 papers. And she said, that'll be $16. I mean, $20, $2 a page. I said, I got $5. She said, it's still $20. I said, I got $5 and that's all I can afford. So she gave me 10 papers. So, you know, I have difficulty in life for three minutes, <clears throat> but everybody in America can say what you want to say. You can believe what you want to believe. You can be what religion you want to believe. But those people downstairs are the Confederate Daughters of the Revolution. And the first thing I said when I came up the stairs, I said, my God, I didn't know there was any of you still living. So, this here, I'm from Hawaii, okay? I was born in a college after they bombed. <clears throat> My mother <coughs> was there with a girlfriend in a 37 Buick at Hickam Air Force Base. She was 18 years old. And she was there to pick up my dad, <clears throat> December 7th, 1941. The only thing that separates Hickam from Pearl Harbor <clears throat> is a fence. That's all it is. And at 730, a major 500 pound bomb went through the deck of the aerosol and went through the second deck and exploded in the magazine hold. And she sunk within 10 minutes, killing 1,173 people, of which 1,003 is still entombed. <clears throat> now, that's my serious side. I wasn't gonna talk about Miss Godwin. Nope. I got a little comical side, too. <clears throat> but my comical side is this. At 3 o'clock in the morning, <coughs> I got a phone call from someone in Alabama, and it was a Mr. Pierce. space alien, and that space alien said, he knows this man. So I'm here to tell you, this man has a following, and I'm warning you ahead of time, the people from Alabama are related to him, and they are coming to get you. Okay, thank you. Humor goes a long way. Yes. <coughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peters. We appreciate your contribution to I've had those for 15 government. years, and I knew they'd come in handy one day. <laughs> <laughs> we have Mr. John Tomaski. Mr. Tomaski, if you could come forward, please. <coughs> good morning to all. John Tomaski, 2949 Post Road, Winston. 
I am uh, familiar with the <coughs> phrase conventional wisdom, but of course it's an oxymoron because if wisdom were conventional, the world would be a lot better place, uh, including the country, including Douglas County. Uh, now, uh, again, uh, one of the things that goes awry in budgetary processes is when boards of commissioners deprecate and subjugate the constitutional officers by lumping <coughs> them in with elected officials that don't have any mandated constitutional duties and responsibilities. And it has been made clear yes. <coughs> from early in 2017 when in March the Sentinel began its <coughs> articles about the coroner, that there were only four constitutional officers, yet the budgetary process that year described all elected officials, other than the five on the commission, as being constitutional officers. The constitutional officers have mandated responsibilities the others don't have. They ought not be put on that plane <coughs> because they have higher responsibility <coughs> and obligations. And the, as I mentioned earlier, there's a large body of case law where various constitutional officers have sued their commissions to get adequate resources and the Georgia Supreme Court generally uphold them under the doctrine of inherent right. <coughs> and those commissioners do this for political reasons, reasons of empire building, cutting people's budgets in order to use that money to promote their own pet projects and personal agendas. So as we go through this budgetary process, let us properly identify constitutional offices and let us not abuse the power of the purse. The court has said it is just fiduciary responsibility that gives the board that right, not to use it as a political weapon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chalansky. We'll take this matter under advisement. Uh, next, we have the <coughs> honor. We have three presentations this morning, and we have the honor of having um, Becky Kurtz here. This morning from ARC, Atlanta Region, Regional Commission, who I've uh, asked to come down and <coughs> serve on the Aging and Independence Board with her and represent Douglas County. And wanted to just ask her to impart all the great things that are available to our seniors here in <coughs> Douglas County. And um, it's very important to me. And ask her if she could just in, uh, share this information with our Board of Commissioners this morning. So welcome, Ms. Kurtz, and we uh, look forward to your great presentation. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And like you said, we appreciate your participation, not only representing Douglas County on the ARC board, but also especially on our Aging and Independent Services Committee. We really appreciate your active <coughs> participation and guidance. Um, I'd like to start off with a very short video that gives you a picture of what we're doing to try to, <laughs> whoops, <laughs> what we're doing to try to outreach um, to your constituents and constituents within the 10 county ARC area about the kind of services we have, and then I'll talk a little bit after that. Now be quiet. <laughs> now there's life changes and surprise obstacles. In the Atlanta region, some of us need a little more help with today and support for tomorrow. At ARC, we're designing an age and ability friendly region for all residents. Jim and Cheryl and Marietta want to make sure their son has access to the support he needs. Sheila's daughter has moved away to Chattanooga and wants to be sure her mom stays active. We all deserve to live our best lives, so we are making our homes, health, and communities priorities. Meet Empowerline, your personal front desk. We're here to help. Call us or log on 24-7. It's well-designed well-being. Abe from Atlanta knows that his diagnosis doesn't mean the music has to stop. 
Mitch in Lawrenceville doesn't have to worry about how long he can stay in his home. Your needs come first, so we can live our best lives and create a brighter future for our entire life. How can Empowerline help you? <laughs> um, so I wanted to take you through a few different slides about what we're doing for our public outreach. One of the things we've heard for a long time is the challenge <laughs> that people have getting the information they need about aging services um, and services for people with disabilities. So I'm going to take you through a few slides about what we're doing about that. And this is our new branding that we've just been pushing out this summer. So it's, we're still getting used to this tagline and this image, but it's really a focus on helping people know how to reach us for information. And then I'll talk a little bit about how that, how we directly partner with Douglas County uh, as well. So just a few slides about this. So we believe, uh, and I'm sure you all share this belief, that we thrive when we make our homes, our health, and our communities priorities. And we call ourselves the front desk. We're the place to come to get <coughs> counseling about what options are available. That's whether those options are private pay, you just need information about how to get Say, for example, someone to come into your home to assist your mother with some housekeeping or to help with personal support or respite, a break for a caregiver. We can help you connect whether you're private pay or whether you might qualify for publicly funded benefits. And we have 24-7 counselors available. Um, in addition to the phone, you can also go online and do an online chat with a counselor. Um, and then we partner with a trusted network of community services and healthcare providers. We have a long list of providers in our region that are able to help with a variety of needs. And one of the really important things we do is partner with each of the counties in our <coughs> region, including Douglas County. So thank you to Richard Hagen and his staff for the amazing work they do here in Douglas in our partnership with them. Um, and we provide federal and state grants to um, that department to provide the services that are publicly funded here in uh, Douglas County. We also provide the gateway, the, the front desk, for people who are Medicaid eligible and receive Medicaid funded services in their homes through a program called Community Care Services Program you may have heard of. Um, one of the things we're doing in our, in our website and all our publications, and we've got some social media accounts as well as empowerline.org, is we're trying to help people understand the services, not through a list of figure out our vocabulary, right? What is respite? What, is, what do these words mean? Instead of all that, instead of a list of services, which is what our old age was connection used to have on it, We've decided to use it through stories, to describe through stories what, what we might be able to help with. So for example, we tell the story of Maria. Maria has a lot of fond memories of living in her home, and she doesn't really want to leave, but she knows she's getting older and having some limited ability to get around her house. She wonders how much longer she'll be able to stay here. For a person like Maria, we can then connect her to the services that would help her stay in her home as long as possible. And so we might link her, depending on her needs, to personal care and light housekeeping. Or maybe she needs access to financial assistance to pay her utility bills. Or maybe she needs some home delivered meals. We can wrap those services around her and help her. If she's a Douglas County resident, we can help her understand what's available in Douglas County. Or Henry um, has, is a child with, uh, an adult child with developmental disabilities and his older father, James, is concerned that he won't be able to continue to support Henry as he, James, gets older. So we help James understand what's available for him as the father as also what's available for uh, Henry, his son with developmental disabilities. So we might help him understand about care coordination and the services that are available for both caregivers and for adults with developmental disabilities. 
or how to navigate the health care system or what he's eligible for in case that may have changed. Um, this is Chuck, and Chuck and his friends have played every Friday for the past 25 years, but he's got a chronic diagnosis, and he's concerned about how his health care might impact his ability to stay engaged in the community. And so we are able to help him figure out where the health education classes that can help him with his chronic disease, or how he can get involved in his uh, community it, through volunteer opportunities and stay engaged and active as he, um, as he ages. Um, and this is for a caregiver who lives in Chattanooga. I won't take you through all the stories, but I welcome you to look at empowerline.org and go through the stories and see if you know people in your community who fit these descriptions and how we can help link them to the services in Douglas County that will assist them. So we're really just kind of the front door, the front desk, and then we help connect people to a variety of services. Um, we um, have been able this year, we're really pleased to say that we were able to get some additional federal funds through the Older Americans Act. Any of you who have um, connections to your members of Congress, thank them because every member of our delegation in the Atlanta region supported increased funding for Older Americans Act services. And that meant an increase for you, what you all are able to provide in terms of home delivered meals, congregate meals at your senior centers, um, those kinds of services. We also provide um, a grant through uh, Federal Transit Administration to uh, provide human services transportation in Douglas County. So um, we provide grants as well as the front door to get to those services and explain to your constituents how they can get the services they need, whether they pay out of their pocket or whether they pay publicly. Our hope is to maximize the private pay and minimize the public option so we save that for those most in need. So I'll turn it over. I don't know if there's a moment for questions. Um, each of you will have a bag full of materials to hand out to your constituents, to take to town hall meetings, wherever you might find that inf information useful. And on the back table, there's a pile of additional postcards for anybody in the audience and magnets that say how to reach us. So I'll turn it over to you. I don't know if you think there's time for questions or whatever you'd like. All the board of commissioners, do you have any questions for Ms. Phillips? Did not know we had the service. That's, I that. I'm, I'm glad to I'm glad to offer the opportunity to um, to talk about it today, and we're excited about the uh, opportunity. It gives anybody over age 60 and any adult of any age with a disability, we can help link to services. Okay, any other questions from the board commissioners? So, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so. Um, <coughs> You, you mentioned that there was um, transportation. Was, was that, talk about that a little again. Or, you said health <coughs> services you would help. So we, we have a few different transportation service programs. And your Douglas County folks can tell you a little more detail about how it works in Douglas County, I'm sure. But we provide some grant funding okay. through the Federal Transit Administration. It's a program <coughs> called 5310. Okay. Um, and it's a competitive process that um, we aren't able to fund everyone who applies in the 10 county area. Yeah. But we are able to give funds to Douglas County for human <coughs> services transportation. And Douglas County can decide how they want to structure that in their proposal to us. Um, we um, have had some services in our region for helping people get to their medical appointments. Unfortunately, those have not been available to Douglas County yet. Um, it's a grant that was funded through a partnership with MARTA and with some uh, City of Atlanta hospitals. But, um, but through the Human Services Transportation Grant, we've been able to help the folks in Douglas specifically. Excuse uh, me, to answer that, to, to kind of piggyback Thank off you. of what, could you go up to, could you go up to the mic, this is, um, no good deed goes unpunished. Good morning, I'm Davida Walker from <coughs> Douglas County Ride Share, and to help her out with this information, we have the Transportation Senior Voucher Program, which provides transportation <coughs> to senior citizens and to disabled adults. They can go to the doctor, and it's human quality services, so they can go to the doctor, they can go to the mall, they can go to the family reunion, <coughs> as long as they can provide documentation of their income, and they get so many vouchers, they purchase so many vouchers for so much money. 
That has been a very good program for Douglas County. We've been in service since I believe 2008. <coughs> Uh, it's been five years, so whatever five from, from 18 is, so to 2013. But it has been a program, I've been able to physically see the relief and the, and the help and the gratitude of citizens who are using this program. So I just want to help out with that question. No, thank you. No, th th thank you very much, and I'm going to continue on. Um, um, so to that point, do we know the, the size of Douglas County's aging population? <coughs> I mean, that's uh, basic facts. I'm a fact do we have to have any picture? I, I can totally get that for you. I just don't know it off the top, no. top of my head. Oh, you don't know I know our region has 700,000 individuals over age 60, but I'd be happy to get you the specific breakdown for Douglas, as well as how it's uh, projected to grow over the next few decades. We'll be happy to provide that to you. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're um, very uh, focused on in addition to the provision of service and the grants uh, piece that we do through our county partners and other nonprofits is that we have a planning function for our area to look at the needs of uh, the future as well as the present. And one of the things that we've discovered over and over and over again is transportation is always identified as the biggest need. So we have important services here in Douglas County that we fund, but we know the need is bigger than the funds are available. So we always have more need than we're able to meet, especially around transportation services. Now, and, I, and I appreciate it. And I always know that, you know, and we appreciate it. It's the first time that you guys been out here, I believe, but formally like this, at least in my term. Thanks to your chairwoman. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so to, to that point, and so it always starts with awareness. Mm -hmm. But at the same point, the board of commissioners here are to sometimes, you know, either uh, extend or, or prohibit certain things based on what we believe. And I think that <coughs> uh, that's the needs of our citizens. We know that Douglas County is aging. Yes. Right? right? And at the same point, it, it's transitioning. We've got a lot of new, but you've got the, um, the, this, it's natural. And we know this. And the reason I asked about the facts was, okay, how fast is it growing? Mm -hmm. All right? And recognizing that there's only so much money that you can provide from the state, there's a local contribution that may need to be done. So, right. okay, but you've got to fill in the gap. So my question was more not to put you on the yeah. spot, but it's like, okay, I got it. I, I, I get it. But um, in, in order to move a little bit further along, uh, we, we, we need a little bit more intelligence. So Madam Chair, I asked if, if they can provide us some more real-time data on Douglas County specific, not the region, but I'd like to know how we could help. Okay, I'm quite that's, sure that's, that's a very that. friendly question. Okay. I like that question. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll be happy to provide that data and also to look to the future. As a region, we are looking in 12 years, 2030, we're looking as a region that on average our population will be one in four of us will be over age 60. And some of our counties are aging more quickly than others. So I will definitely follow up and send you all the statistics, not only on how many individuals are older right now, but also looking at 2030, 2040, 2050, what we're looking at in terms of trends, uh, growth in this area. Our region is one of the fastest growing older adult populations in the country. So it's a really uh, timely and important question you ask. Yeah, when we talk about long-term capital planning, the comment was made earlier about our budgeting, uh, we need to anticipate. Yes. Right. We and, and again, everybody knows Absolutely. that the baby boomers are coming of age, yep. right? And so we know there's going to be a gap. Yep. And, and so we, we have in Douglas County. We're trying to take some real proactive stance. Okay, what can we do to make provisions <coughs> for the future? So, but we need data. So that was my only point. We, yep. we, we good story, but we got to take some really hard actions because we know it's ten dollars worth of need, and we only got a dollar. But to the extent we can help add to it, it would help. I yield, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Guider. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm going to how you spell it. Kurtz. 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 Here in Douglas County, I think we accommodate 120 people with the, the voucher system. But uh, we could, and we still have a waiting list of about 80 to 100 <coughs> people that do not have any kind of other transportation. <coughs> So we could buy more vouchers, right? Absolutely. Uh, do you know it. about how sure. much uh, it is per? Do you know what your unit cost is? <coughs> the beta. I, I, no. I don't know off, off the top no. of it. We can get that for you. We can get okay. the unit cost. Yeah, so <coughs> that can be made available mm -hmm. to you. We just don't have that information right now. 
Because once uh, someone is on the <coughs> list, the voucher list, mm -hmm. they're on there until either they move or they pass away. So uh, uh, we're, we're needing more. Absolutely. Now, especially as our population, our elderly population grows. So I would like to know how much it would cost for the county to actually buy additional vouchers. We, we can definitely get that unit cost for you. And um, I really appreciate these questions because there's great variability from county to county in terms of where the uh, level of investment and the ability of the county to invest. Um, but there are some counties where our grants are 85% of the funding for aging services. There are other counties where we're only 10%, um, and the county has put in that much additional. So you all are on that spectrum somewhere, but, but every county has to take a look at their population, so where's the unmet need and what are our opportunities to participate? So those are very friendly questions. We welcome whatever partnerships we can develop together to meet the needs of your constituents, who are also our constituents. Thank you. Okay. Can I just have one last question for you, Becky, and it may be for Director Hagen as well. Can you talk about uh, discount uh, in terms of uh, pharmaceuticals for our uh, citizens here over 60? So I know that, I don't know if you have anything to add to this, I know that anybody who calls Empowerline.org, our counselors have a list of all the discount programs that are available and can take people through what they might qualify for. So that would be the best option, is to go to one of those counselors who's got a, a really good database of all the possibilities. I'm going to just see if you have anything you want to add to that. Well, it's really coming Yeah, so for the audience. For the audience. The audience. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you, Director Hagen. Sure. It, it would be the same for Douglas County. We would treat it the same way if that referral or that inquiry were to go to ARC. Um, if it comes directly to us, it's handled in the same way because we sort of share a database of providers and programs and discounts and that sort of thing. So it would be handled in the same way. Okay. Sometimes we call this no wrong door. You go, you go to this department, you go to this department, we're going to use the same database of information and share it so that you don't have to make multiple calls. We're trying to help people get the information they need no matter where they call. So it's not a wrong door. Okay. Commissioner Geiger. Just one question. Do y'all partner with faith-based organizations like uh, the Pantry, the Care Place, uh, New Mountaintop uh, Church out there? They have a pantry, too. So. Partner from the standpoint I mean, of the they, Are they on your list? Yes, yes, yes. We, <laughs> we, we work hand-in-hand -hand with all those organizations, some more than others, um, and have recruited volunteers extensively through, especially New Mountaintop over the years, and a lot of faith-based organizations and churches in the community. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think, thank you all so much, and thank you so much, Becky, and thank you, Director Hagan, for providing this valuable information to us this morning. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Um, Good stuff this morning, y'all. Next, we have an update from our tax commissioner. I approached him and uh, and also our tax commissioner and also our deputy uh, chief of the tax commission. Uh, Jennifer Lurves is here this morning as well to present. Um, and I approached uh, the tax commissioner about uh, two months ago and said, "Is it? I think it's time for an update. And I, they said good things come to those who wait. And I understand they have some very good information for us this morning. So thank you so much. Deputy, uh, Good morning. I'm Jennifer Learsh. I'm the Chief Deputy Tax Commissioner. We also have our Tax Commissioner, Mr. Gregory Baker. He's right out here. He's making sure there's enough seats out here. So um, I'm just going to kind of quickly run through this for everyone. We've had a busy year for our office this year as we moved. So we had a lot of packing and cleaning, <coughs> moving, adjusting to a whole new system of how we have our customers in the office. So even at, with all that going on, we're still keeping up and we're actually doing more than we did last year this time. Um, you can definitely tell the economy is changing. You can see a lot more cars being bought, a lot more titles being done, a lot more TAVT, just title I've alarm tax being taken in. So, so far this year, and this is just for the tag office, we've had 240, over $240,000 in just titles that have been done. Uh, we've had tag, uh, tag and transfers of the tags over two million dollars in, in those fees that have been collected on that. We've had tag and tax penalties, those involve late payments, insurance laps, all those, um, or those are actually separate. But that's 126,000. 
just auto tax if you're on the old system where you pay the ad valorem tax we've already collected 1.5 million of those wow. in, in revenue TABT, which is the title ad valorem tax we've collected this is our big one over 16 million it's almost at 17 million now at this point in title ad valorem tax that we've collected on new purchases with new vehicles we've had TABT penalties <coughs> when they've either paid late or there's been an issue of over 111,000 the interest is at 7,000 insurance fees insurance lap fees if your insurance does lapse and the insurance company does not forward it over you do pay a fee and if you let it go even further it gets even higher than that and we've collected so far $147,000 in those fees alternative fuel vehicles we've only got those at 9,000 almost 10 the highway <coughs> impact fee is at 78,000 so for total for just our tag office that we've collected it's $21,066,494.17 so we've collected a majority so far this year in our tag office and this just kind of going to give you some numbers of how much that we do in our office so far this year we've already done 144,000 transactions and that can be you know, putting a hold on an account, putting notes in the account, anything that we did in our gratis or our tax system, we've, and we've done a transaction, we've had 144 transactions that we've done. So that's, that's a pretty good portion. We've had out-of-state titles, we've done 2,281 of those. Um, a title transfer, we've done 6,109. We've issued a tag or a decal, we've done 13,011 of those in the office. Um, or by mail renewal or, re or renew your registration we've done 82,521 transactions so far this year so we've we've definitely kept up that's an average of 16,960 so far this year per month in transactions that we're doing in our office and that's just our tag office side so we're definitely keeping up and, and it's actually more than it was last year it's about 130 more than what we did last year per month already this year So next we have our tax office we have had I believe it was four tax sales so far this year <clears throat> we started out with anywhere between 250 to 300 properties in each one of those sales we got it down um, to where we only sold a total of 111 properties and we only had 30 that were no bids so most of those other ones were all collected on and that was all we ended up having to bring to the table which is great we've been able to get a lot of the older years collected as you can see so far we've collected all the way back to 2009 tax this past tax sale we put some properties in that we've tried to sell multiple years in a row and we can't get them sold and we've put them in a tax sale this past month and almost all of them sold or got paid and so we got those off the books which is great and we had about 45 of those properties that we've been trying to sell and we just can't get them sold so that's something that we've definitely accomplished this past month and we are excited about that to get those off the books and to move forward so so far this year we have don't have any 18 as you can see because we haven't started 18 we're actually just mailed out the tax bills this past Saturday we mailed out over 55,000 tax bills so be on the lookout for your tax bill it is coming there will be a little flyer insert in there just to let everyone know that we have moved but the <coughs> mailing address is still the same so please do not mail the mail to the new building it can stay at the same PO box or the 8700 address it does not have to change um, you can still overnight items to the 8700 and we will still get it so it does not change or affect any of that but the only way it affects you is if you're coming in person to the office you don't come here come to the 6200 Fairburn Road address okay so our total between both offices for this year $26,758,383.86 in tax revenue that we've collected and that's for all entities and that's over the whole broad spectrum that's interest penalties everything so we've done a lot this year so, I don't know if Mr. Baker you got anything Unless they got questions. Okay. <laughs> Board of Commissioners, anyone we'll have a question or comment? Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we, so what I heard you say in your opening comments is that um, you're seeing a lot more tags 
coming in, which, which is an indicator that the citizens are doing better. Um, I heard you talk about going back to 08. Uh, it has been a decade. I'm sure if, you've been, if anybody's been around, we've come a long way. Yes. And, and I mean, <coughs> uh, an awful long way. And the citizens are, um, again, improving. And, uh, and I'm always sensitive about the narrative about doing well. As long as the citizens are doing well, making sure our, our conversation as a government um, does not outstrip our citizens and where they are and that it's not disconnected, especially when we get in conversations regarding the spend. So we'll, we'll come back to that later. But that, that being said, um, uh, can, can you talk to about this TAVT? And I'm sure Madam Guida would help weigh in on this. I mean, is that changing over time? Do we see an adjustment coming? Where do we stand with all that? I believe that everything is pretty much, I think it's at 7% that still um, is the percentage that the title of warm tax rate is. Mm -hmm. It's not changing. I believe it's going to be staying 7% for, I think, until 2025 is what the, I believe the agreement is. It was a 10 um, uh, It may be a little bit sooner before that, but you can definitely tell. And that's on the value of the car. So, and that, that just shows you that you can tell the values of the cars are either going up or they're going, they're buying newer cars or buying cars that are high in, in value. So, and they do have the right to appeal that as well, so. All right, and, and just in general, and my, my second question has to do more with operations to your comment. Mm -hmm. If anybody's been downstairs to, uh, if nothing, to, to watch citizens come up there and I, I know where they're going because they look and they read on the door, they're like, oh, I guess yes. I gotta go somewhere else. Uh, but, but they didn't seem, I mean, I mean, consistently, no one seems to be upset. It's like, oh, it's up the street. Mm -hmm. How has that experience been so far in your new building? I'd like to hear for the record, and the task commission can weigh in. How is it going so far? It's been excellent. I am very proud of our employees and how hard that they worked to pick up how this new queuing system works. The first day we ran through, we had over a thousand people the first day we opened up at that location come in. And there was a long wait because we had, we were closed the day before, and we had a half day on that Friday. So we had the weekend and all there. Um, but we did over a thousand people in that one day. Just for the month of July, I pulled statistics. We were an average from one minute 30 seconds to a little over five minutes on each customer on average that we were helping coming in. We had 744 people on per day on average come in for, for that whole month. So um, it was a lot that was coming in in the month of July. And it just, it's gonna vary for us each sure. each month because of birthdays. So it's not gonna always stay that, that amount, but we're seeing anywhere from 400 to 800. So. So, so more throughput, uh, you can get people in and get them out. Um, it's a better layout for you. Yes. I mean, I mean, beyond the typical punch list to come with any new building, yes. overall, it's what you really need to do to be able to provide better services for the citizens. Is that accurate? Yes. We do have a few actual vacant positions, or not positions, but we have vac vacant spots that we can grow and have. We have about three on the tag side mm -hmm. that we can grow and, and make those positions and, and have those offered you know, eventually coming up. So we do have space to grow. We have had some issues with our printers. It's not our IT group at all. It is actually the state. When we print through our gratis system, mm -hmm. it actually goes through the state firewall and then comes back to our printers and prints here. And the state's had an issue with their firewall and we've had it almost weekly where our printers just stopped working and there's nothing we could do. And But the state was able to get those back up fairly quickly. But of course, we were able to direct people. We had our um, tag renewal kiosk. It's right there in the lobby. We were able to move it. So we directed people there. We also directed them to Kroger. So they were able to still renew if that's what they were in to do. All right. My last question is that is parking sufficient there? I know we've yes. got more ample space here in the courthouse yes. per se, but how but for court, but how is it coming for you? Is it sufficient? It's, yes, it's it's great. It's perfect. Okay. Well, I yield, okay. I yield, Madam Chair. It's good right now. <laughs> but remember, Bills are due now. People yeah, will start bills. coming in now. Fair enough. That parking lot's going to fill up very fast. Yeah. The, si the 60 day due date, I have a feeling this year we'll see more people coming in just because they want to see the new location and we want to definitely show it off. Um, we're very proud of it. We worked very hard on it and we do appreciate it and we really, really appreciate it. So we definitely think we'll see more this year, mm -hmm. maybe than the next year thereafter. Um, but we'll be able to still get them in and out. But, but, Madam Chair, just to clarify, so to that point, how many parking spaces are there? And if you do get capacity, we don't have like the senior center across the street and so forth, like the courthouse that had additional capacity. How will you handle that? Or will citizens just ride around to their parking? I'm 
maybe the county administrator, can you speak to how many <coughs> students are there? And what's the, um, what, what is our backup? For I don't the, remember exactly how many. Uh, Jane just saying nine, so. Okay, there's something to just be mindful of. I mean, I know we've got that big fleet area back in the back, but I think that's what's secure as yes, unauthorized personnel. Yes. So it's just, okay. You guys we'll probably have out. to work that whenever that comes because that will be something we have not had to deal with as far as being in our own location. <laughs> but we do have security there, which is we're very thankful that Sheriff Pounds gave us that. And we do have that there that we could also let them know during this time frame we're going to need extra assistance and then they can help direct in the parking lot. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Geiger. Uh, Jennifer, <coughs> um, what percentage do tag renewals do you do by mail? Is it still around 30, 33 percent? Yes. Yes. That's it's still a lot. Will not grow because of the few dollars extra, I guess, the charge and everything. Yes. But we could look at <coughs> adjusting that charge if it would yeah. encourage more people to do it. But yeah. uh, the second kiosk, there was going to be a kiosk over at Kroger on Highway 5. Is that up yet? No, it's... It it's in the works, but it, it's not up yet. Hopefully, it'll be up by either the end of November or December. Okay. So and, we're working on it. And the drop box, you, you have a drop box out here. You're going to yes. have a drop <coughs> box there where people don't actually have to go in to pay their taxes if yes. they got a check or whatever. We're actually looking at that right now. We're looking at two different options, either a drive-up option where they can drive up, drop it in, just like they <coughs> do have here. I know the one that we have here, it's starting to rust, so we're having trouble opening the door every day. Yeah. So we definitely are going to have to get something in place as soon as possible. Um, or we can do an option where we have something in the door where they can just drop it in through the door. But that would require them to get out of the car. So yeah. I think the option that we're probably going to be going with is the drive up, because there is a perfect location that we can put that in, that they could literally just drive right up, put it in, make a circle, and come right out. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I just have one closing comment. Uh, thank you all, first of all, for bringing this um, great information to us. I, I see the total number that we have. Uh, what is the impact and what is, it, what is this number compared to last year? We just, you know, to tell us how well we're doing and what I heard that we're, we're doing good, but yes, in I, comparison to who and what. I actually pulled that information um, just for the tax office side. This just kind of helps for me, for purposes as far as new homeowners, you can see the difference between homesteads. Last year, we had about 3,119 total for the year of 18 in homestead applications that were filed. This year, we're only at, let's see. Yeah, it looks like 2,085. So it's not fully there yet, but we still have three, four months left in the year. So we're definitely gonna see that go up. And then as far as the titles and transactions, of course, those are less right now from the whole year to this year. Um, let me see, I actually have that right here. Total in transactions we had for 17 were over 200,000. We had 201,982 transactions out of those. The let's see, tax collection standalone, we only had 1,635 total transactions for that. Whereas this year, <coughs> let's see, it looks like we're at 1,905. So um, we've still got a little bit to go. And as many transactions as they're doing, it'll definitely start picking up. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Just one quick question. Uh, the position uh, that, that you hired, Greg, uh, that there was a commercial side of it, how is that coming along? Any, any updates on that? <coughs> Uh, with that personnel, you know, that, that kind of got you ahead of the curve of, of uh, those commercial businesses that are trying to side step? That's coming along great. We're catching the companies that are going out of business. Right. Before they go out of business, we're collecting that tax revenue before they leave right. Douglas County so we don't have to chase them down. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually, Mr. Barnhill is doing a great job. If you notice, I think the last one, I think I just mentioned it, he locked out the popcorn company next to Shane. Mm -hmm. um, they hadn't paid their taxes in three years. He locked them out on, I think it was Thursday, Friday they were in and paid all three years of taxes. So we're going through and uh, we're riding around and we we look at different businesses and, and we find out who owes his taxes. And we're, we're giving them time to come in. These are people who 
he goes out, he talks to, they promise to come in, they never come in. Mm -hmm. And he gives them ample time. And then what we'll do is, once we go out and lock them up, they seem to have to find the money. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a great job on that end. Of course, we could use additional, mm -hmm. but again, we, we're gonna survive with what we got, but I think we're missing dollars out there uh, but we'll do the best we can for right. That was going to be my next question. I mean, we're doing great, good with that. How can we do even better if we, I'm assuming that the additional person, um, I'm assuming now, I'm not making this up for you, but is, is that yeah. Well, I did, I did my <coughs> my calculation, and I always do things on dollars, <coughs> dollars and cents. I never want to add a person if they're not going to bring value <coughs> to the count. Understood. So if they're going to make us an additional $2 million to bring revenue in, and it's got to be on a consistent basis. And I want to come to you guys and say, hey, I need this person that's going to bring this much. But I still have some more evaluations to do. Mm -hmm. And remember when I came to you and asked for two people, I think it's been two years now. I still have some more evaluation to do before I come back to you. I think I did some stuff in my budget, but it hasn't <coughs> been as much as I, as I asked for before because I think I can get by with a little less in training somebody. Mm -hmm. um, that's always my go. Mm -hmm. So I still need to do that evaluation before I ask for another person. And I, and I believe, like I say, I can probably get by training somebody and getting a little less dollars, but I gotta make sure all those dollars are coming in that will make sense. Okay, Let's put it that way. okay, okay. I you And okay. one other thing, mm -hmm. on the parking, it is gonna be hard uh, when they come in for their tax dollars and they will be probably driving around mm -hmm. and they probably will do be some complaints because it's only 90 spaces there mm -hmm. and you got to remember on the tax side some days there's 60 to 70 people there so now you throw in the homeowners coming in to pay their taxes somebody's going to drive around and we're gonna, we're going to probably get some complaints but we understand that that's going to be two to three months out of every year and there's nothing we can do about it at this time, and we'll just have to live with it and work around it. And like I said, we do have security out there. We may set one of our employees out there, or you may see me standing out there to help direct traffic, get them in and out, <coughs> and the whole thing. But it's going to be that way for at least three months every year. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Next, we have a SPLOST update um, by Mr. Terry Gable from Moreland at the Belly. Madam Chair and Commissioners. Mm -hmm. My name is Terry Gable. I'm in Moral Mouth Building. I'll be giving this FOSS update for September. Uh, this first uh, slide is a, just a, a pie chart showing the, the three uh, program elements. We're still currently right around $10 million. Um, as this program grows, that you'll obviously see that number go up. But we've been we've been just a little below $10 million for building up with approved invoices and that includes keep in mind that includes both year one and two uh, for fire and EMS we're still around at 4.4 million dollars for year one and two <coughs> transportation at 4 million and then with parks and recs the program that probably got more most of the design in uh, and we're still in the design design stages, and you're going to see a lot. Of, you're going to see that jump pretty quick with getting some of the concession buildings under construction, which is on the board board's agenda this month for approval. So, but we're still a little bit under four hundred thousand dollars for parks and recs with a lot going on. And then finally, with program management, again year to date, uh, year one and two, we're just a little over one million. So, in, in talking about revenues, um, the economy seems to be on. A, be robust and we ha even had a little slight tick up from uh, from June um, at just right at 2.2 million 
comparing, this is just another graphic of it showing a little bit of a jump. Hopefully that'll stay there, the economy will continue to grow, and we'll see those go up. If you can get a little closer to the holidays, we'll get, obviously get the, the benefit from the shopping, so that's a good sign. Uh, this slide showing, uh, again, total revenues for Splash Jewel 1 and 2. The, the revenue is just a little over $32 million. And what was projected, we compare that to what was projected, uh, which we got a, a it's based on an economic uh, model. It's showing just a, 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 a 1 percent growth each year, which is that comes to about 32 million dollars. So we were right on right on projections from what the um, what was first established at the beginning of the program. Just a slight difference. We we're under about 14 thousand dollars for the total of both years. And then the raw numbers for um, for July was 2.24 million. Uh, if you compare those first four months of, of the second year's plus, uh, the projection was a little over eight million, and then we've we've collected 8.46 million, which you've got about a four hundred thousand dollar difference there. And if you if you average that out per month, we've we've seen since April we've seen about a hundred thousand dollar increase uh, from what was projected. So good numbers there, and hopefully well that'll continue. <clears throat> the um, the bond payments are on track now. You know the first revenues are are, are collected or stored until we get enough to pay the bond. Um, the first one will be October first at 1.3 million, and then April first at 6.3 million. We'll make that and get the second year paid up. And with that, we'll I'll give you some updates on the projects by program. The, the first one is the countywide digital radio system. Uh, it's on track within within schedule and budget. Uh, we still got a good bit of work going on with, with stations 5, 8, 11, and Bill Arc. Some of it is in, in, in the design stage with permits, but a lot of it is actually under construction with their, their building foundations. And we got chiefs that we then we're actually getting some tower equipment in. So you'll see some some towers go up at those locations as, as Motorola moves forward. We've got three of the properties that are still in some form of land acquisition. At this point, not seeing any problems with them, it's just taking some time to work that out with all steel gas, uh, factory shows, and fair play with the city. Uh, from a percentage standpoint, uh, Jay and we're about 30% complete. <coughs> the ambulances, we have two on order for the chief uh, with a a cost of about $390,000. They're in fabrication still, but they're about 70% complete. Hopefully we'll be uh, receiving those in the next couple of months. Uh, the pumper truck uh, with a budget of $550,000. I think the vendor for that is on the agenda for, is on the, he's already been approved. So it's uh, chief and we're moving forward with, um, with getting that order in and, and getting, that, getting that truck up ordered for us. Our station three, we finally got Titus construction on board. We had a kickoff meeting with them last Thursday. Uh, the meeting went well. Um, we've got some other homework to do with the temporary housing. Uh, we've got to get the final document signed with that and get the order in to get the, the temporary housing uh, in fabrication. It'll take about three weeks to get that on site. Uh, Titus is going to go ahead and start some work that they can do on the outside. So I don't see any issues with it slowing the project down. They can get the new renovation started and 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 move the project forward. It's showing a March 19th, uh, 2019 um, completion date. I don't we I don't see any problem with us meeting that if not earlier to have the, the fire station completed. <coughs> Staff vehicles. The chief has three on order. I think one one was an expedition that's in. And we've got two pickups. Uh, they're still on board. And that will we'll move into transportation. We um, got worried last week, I think Lamont did, that uh, C.W. Matthews is moving in, I think, today. So uh, that was a little bit earlier than what I think they had told us at the, at the initial meeting. Um, we're showing a completion date of December, end of December, but I'm pretty sure they'll get that completed before then and before the holidays. So that's good news, and they'll should see them out there putting some asphalt down here soon. These next two slides 
are placeholders for the element funding that we're tracking in the SPLOS now since we're matching we're matching those element funds with SPLOS. And we'll, you'll see that those numbers <coughs> change as, as we're monitoring and get the work done throughout the year. This next slide is the Lee Road Extension Study. Uh, it's currently on what, uh, as you know, is, is ongoing. Miguel is, is um, in some of the reoccurring meetings. It's on track, I think, to be completed in, in October. Um, and they'll have both the deliverables for the, the initial uh, stu uh, design study that was done at Lee Road 92, and then for the, the one that was added on Lee Road uh, back up to I-20. Stuart Mill Road intersection. So we've got Jacobs on board, and they've um, they've actually started work now. They uh, they're out surveying the the site. It should take them about a week to two weeks to do that, and we're anticipating about a four to five month completion date on design. This going to put us somewhere around January. Uh, Miguel's already doing some, uh, and I think we reported this last month with some of the old right of way plans that were done back under the original design, which hopefully may come in uh, as a benefit as we we near completion of the design, we can see what impacts we have on right of way. Um, the, this will be a, one of the projects that we hope to get close to being advertised around January or February. Well, I, I, let me back up on that. It'll get it into the right of way phase. If whatever right of way uh, or easements that Miguel's group has to go out and acquire, uh, we'll have to allow time for that and we, we'll be able to go to construction. <coughs> Bright Star Road. <clears throat> is about 90 percent completed with the design. Miguel, it's in the right of way phase. Miguel is working on that, doing title searches. We don't anticipate a lot of time for that, maybe two or three months. So this will be another intersection that we'll have close to getting uh, being ready for advertising as we move towards uh, the end of the year. So it's on track uh, to be let and hopefully be under construction by the first of 2019. Sweetwater Church. The IGA is on the agenda for approval with uh, Paulin County. They're finishing up some of the uh, minor design uh, components of it with the, uh, along with the traffic signal. Um, we expect to have uh, everything completed and, and be ready to advertise that project again towards the end of the year. Um, we ended up, I think, with a couple parcels, small parcels that needed to be acquired uh, with Douglas County doing one and, and Paulin County doing the other. <clears throat> so good news in, on the intersections that we're starting to make, finally to make some good progress with them. Uh, Chapel Hill Road is, is a larger project of the group. Um, we are still in the preliminary stages with that. With the, with the SEI, we're looking at adding sidewalk and curb and gutter on the east side of that road. Um, and that's the side that's got the side streets and the subdivisions. Uh, we're still trying to develop just some basic layouts for it. Um, and, and now they're currently going back and, and finalizing that with some more uh, modeling of the, of the road. So we'll get that. Once we get that done, we, we, our plans are to go out to a public information meeting and show it to the public out there and take some more comments. And then we can, uh, we can get this project moved into a, a design stage. Highway 5 at Douglas Boulevard. Uh, Miguel's currently, I've got him over uh, a request for a proposal <coughs> to go out for design services for the for the right turn lane on Highway 5. Um, he's had meetings with both the city and the property owner, uh, engaging them in, in making some plans <coughs> up front, uh, and putting them on notice that we've got the project coming. And so he's got it tagged, the city's got it tagged uh, for, any, <coughs> for any type of development that may occur. And he, again, he's engaged the owner and had some conversations with him. Highway 92 and Anna Wakey, um, with the cost of the project that we, we've initially looked at, uh, Miguel's working up a scoping study to this. Uh, so I think that would be the best approach at this point. Uh, he can get it out on the street and we can get a design group in here to give us some, some, uh, some good layouts and some good cost estimates and impacts it's going to take to, to put the road in. And then the board can make decisions on, on how to move forward with that based on budget and scope. Post Road Bridges, this is the, the project that GDOT has. 
An opportunity to be posted as we move forward. If you remember, remember those, it's, it's got a lot of debris <coughs> in there with it. Uh, it may, it'll probably be towards the latter part of 2019, towards the middle before we hear anything about the contractor coming into Douglas. But no problems with it, and they're moving forward with the design and construction <coughs> on those other bridges. Um, so the next three are our school projects. SEI has finished the, uh, the surveying on it, so these are moving. These will move fairly quickly. Uh, they're they're trying to do some research on right of way and plats in front of the schools. They have a little bit difficult time coming to that. Um, but they're, they're small projects, and I anticipate having these ready uh, again towards the end of the year, if not the first of 2019. Uh, they will probably be ready to uh, to go out for bid for construction. There may be some uh, some easements that will need that will need that will be needed at Chestnut Log and. Um, in Lithia Springs, uh, that may slow it down some, but again, I think we're on track around the first of the year for those. Chestnut Middle, and then New Manchester. And then finally, with transportation, Miguel's got um, two pickups and two dumps that are on order, and then I think of the agenda some uh, additional funds for some additional equipment for him. You guys to approve. <coughs> and with that, we'll move into the parks and rec. Mr. Gary? We have one question for you. Sure. All right, so, I, 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 thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I notice, where do we stand with the street lights? Well, the work's completed, and all the, the lights are on the, 100% um, uh, of the lights are on, and uh, we are waiting at this point. The only thing left is, the, is for the invoice to come in from Greystone, which we have not seen. Okay. The reason I asked that for probably the past, what, 15 months, we've talked about street lights, street lights, street lights. And we're just now, it's complete, but you didn't close it out. All right, and we're going to bring this full circle. Um, they're on, based on the last meeting we had, they should be on. But it, it, it took an escalation to have them come on. Um, and, and so it's sort of like you just you smooth through this. I'm going to go back to something, and we're going to be quick about this. Okay. When we did the presentations, and some of you guys will remember this, and um, Madam Clerk, when did we have those two meetings um, for the presentations for the program manager? Do you recall? No, February 20th. February 20th. Yeah, February 20th. I remember the date. And we had two present. We had two presentations for uh, interested parties in this. And I remember. Um, in those presentations, Mr. Tom Warley himself stood up right over there. And he leaned in. Commissioner Robinson, you've asked that question twice. Now I asked everybody consistently this question, which is if something goes wrong, not what goes right, if something goes wrong, will you be accountable? I was very specific about communication. <laughs> about, okay, how are y'all gonna really handle project management? I was only, I had a very, I was, I was very <coughs> refined in that question. He got it. I was like, no, Mr. Warren, you're okay. So you, we, we're good, let, let those guys that you hired answer the question is where I was going with this. And this experience with these, these street lights, and, and I say that is that this, I'm, I'm disappointed. Not by the, not, not by the, the actual structure itself, don't get me wrong. <coughs> it's our experience. That was supposed to be a quick win. Those were, uh, that project was on the list at the top. It was supposed to be, boom, out the gate. We were excited. <coughs> this, is, this is about level setting. This is something that as we get into these two verticals that we don't get here and we don't just dismiss something if somebody says, okay, so what's going on? Beyond the weather, beyond all of that, it, it just was a, we just rolled, y'all rolled through this whole thing and it was like, okay, so are y'all listening? Like, well, where are the lights? Well, they should be on, they should be on, they should be on. I mean, I went and looked at all those tapes. It should be on, it should be on. I'm like, well, did you not look? I mean, I can barely see. I go out there, I see they're not on. And it was sort of like you were just, it was, I'm gonna take this person off. It was just, it was the message that came through. And we just, we expect more out of our program manager, but we're very good to say, okay, but our, uh, our program management bill is getting paid every month. What, what, I mean, I thought that was so insulting. You're very good to say that, oh, hey, you're billing us to program manage, but yet, what about these street lights, <clears throat> right? Um, it, 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 shouldn't have, it shouldn't have taken that. And 
you know, so I go out and I tell my citizens what they sh should be on. I knew better, but I knew how to frame it to not throw myself under the bus because, again, I'm looking at y'all like, okay, but are y'all talking? Then when we did escalate within our own organization, I believe Director Peacock was the one that delivered me the message that, okay, it wasn't a priority. Well, how can something that you respond to not be a priority if it's at the top of the food chain? And I'm saying this on behalf of the <coughs> citizens that were gracious enough to give us a splost. And it just needed to be more responsiveness that, okay, I'm not here for my health. <coughs> when I bring things up and we're interested in it, and it just, it, I mean, this goes all the way through. So somebody, whether it's staff, the program manager, the, the, I, I mean, come on in. And we, we're just not, the citizen, this is citizens' money. So you have to get it, be, where's the accountability that says, hey, you know what, we should have escalated. Why did it take me to be in some branding meeting offline and sort of run into somebody and be like, oh my God, we didn't know this was an issue. <coughs> that bothered me. I mean, it went all the way up to the food chain of the vendor, which I'm like, okay, why did it take me to do that? I mean, we've got some senior people here. You guys are paid very well. Why did it take that? Why did it take that? Um, so, I, I guess at this point, I, I don't know who can speak on behalf of the actual project itself, and I'm going to close out my comments because I, I don't want to experience this again. <coughs> right? I, I think that our, all our brands are on the line here. Right? The citizens see how we, like think about how we're being treated as elected officials. I'm wondering how the citizens feel. That can't happen. Not, not for me. Like, really? Think about it. Now the citizens are looking at this moment and said, okay, so wow, look at how they treat the elected officials, right? They're non-responsive. <coughs> and that's to make you sensitive to, to what this is about. Like when we raise stuff, there should have been a natural escalation. <coughs> We're not paying 2.4 million just to sort of sit here and give me a pound of paper. You need to know that the light's on. Why do I have to get some, some people out to citizens? Like, well, can you drive Riverside for me and let me know if the light's on? <coughs> Why do I have to do that? Now I get my job is to check and balance. Absolutely. That is my job. But yet I'm, I'm looking for y'all to at least deliver against that. Um, it, um, I'm going to respond. I'm, I'm going to pause there because I, I think it would only be fair to allow, um, <coughs> is anybody here from Greystone um, or anybody who can speak to this yes. experience? Yes. Please. 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 Please come on up front. Introduce your Madam Chair. Yes, please. Yes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nadia Fawcett with Graystone Power. Um, I'm the VP of Engineering. And um, I do want to say two things. First of all, thank you for letting us partner with you. Um, the second thing I do want to say is that Commissioner Robinson did share some feedback with me about the project at the branding meeting. Um, I appreciate your candidness. Um, our teams got together and talked about what we could have done better. Um, why, why did the project take so long? I'm, Kind of new coming in but we really delved back to find out what what took so long and how do we communicate with our partner i would say on our side that i think the core issue was the fact that we were operating on a different time frame than what the commissioner and maybe several others might have expected and so if, if anybody does project management you know those have to match and we have to communicate well to say okay this is where we expect the project to end and if it doesn't end in that time frame you communicate on how, on the adjustments to that time frame so um, I would I think Greystone does need to take some ownership some ownership and <coughs> making sure that we knew the time frame because in all honesty we were operating under the fact that we were pulling crews on and off just just like we would do for a normal lighting project so once we found out that this was we needed to speed it up and this was very time sensitive. We dedicated boring crews, we dedicated site crews and others to make sure we get the project done in a timely manner. So, um, so and then we talked and then escalated that further to get the project done. I will say there are three lights at the corner of Riverside, North River Road and um, Riverside that we're tying into another project so those lights should not be on about three lights, but the rest of the lights are burning. I've driven by there myself before I called you back because <laughs> I wanted to make sure that we had done our due diligence on our part. So um, if you do have any questions, please consider me a resource um, and we'll make sure you get taken care of. Um, but we do take part ownership in making sure that we have an alignment in the time sensitivity of the project going forward. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It was perfect timing. Thank you, Nadia. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And, and so did for, for Moreland, you, can you guys give us some insight? 
as well? Well, you know, I think it Rich's reported from the beginning. You know, the project was, award, uh, I think the board approved it back in July. I mean, it was just done with a purchase, purchase order. And it was, it had already started once we got in. Um, and as to my knowledge, there was no dates in it. There was no completion dates. And as any, any contractor you have with a contractor, that's one thing you have to fall back on is the completion date and the contract. And there was no date in it to say the project needed to be done by by December or March. But I think throughout the whole process, Rich and I stayed on it. Uh, he would ride through it every time he came over. We made several calls to Greystone. We sent emails to Greystone. Now, David Good was out with Moreland. He was out riding the project at night. He would report back to me. And I made several calls to um, to the office myself and talk to um, Jessica and it just the work either continued nothing got done or when the first the last time I talked to her she had no idea the lights were not even working so they didn't they didn't have information themselves that the, that the lights were not working and it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's amazing how fast time just kind of progressed on and before we know it here we are September and, and it took that long or it took July or August to get them finished <coughs> And, and, and I pre we won't belabor this, but uh, again, the, you know, the, the consequences are just that, which is it, 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 the quality uh, is impacted, right? If you think about time, money, and scope, right? The triple constraints to anybody who has project management, you've got to balance them. Again, th th this is a set of projects. That's why we have a program manager, which means there should be a roll-up. There should be, it, it just doesn't go off indefinitely. This is not just right. ongoing operation. That's why I'm looking at you, I'm like, but it's a project. It had to have a start and end date. There had to be expectations, but the challenge was, but every month you were telling me they should be on, they should be on. That's where I, I think that if Madam Nadia brought up a good point, is that can we just do a better job of communicating, right? And I'm gonna hold staff also has gotta get this ring, because y'all know I'm upset. Y'all, if they don't know my, my spirit, you guys knew better. You knew that like, okay guys, how many times I gotta say this? And it would just seem like there was no urgency. There was no like, okay, we just, it was an insensitiveness, and I, I think we can do better because, again, the, the public doesn't have to grant us this again, and staff is not entitled to the spend. So there's got to be a balancing act that says, no, y'all are not entitled to that splost and, and just spending for that sake. So if they have expectations and you're setting them, it's okay if I didn't, I wasn't set expectation every 30 days they were going to be on. If you just told me a date, we would have managed to it, but it was just this ongoing, and here we are, and again, look how smoothly we just dismissed it, that we didn't even want to close it out. You knew I wasn't going to let that go away. But I, I just want to bring that out. Um, please, let's, let's try to do, just do better. And we just use it as an object lesson, please. And one and thing I'll mention, and in order, please keep in mind, is more now that does not have the CEI on, or the construction inspection on, as we move forward with other projects. Um, that's not in our contract, it's just program management. So, and that's a key component to making sure contractors getting the projects done is the inspection part of it and a construction manager on a project. This project was a little bit different being uh, street lights, it was. Uh, but uh, we've got a lot of construction to go, so we're not involved with the oversight on the construction and the, the, the quality assurance on it. Okay, wait a minute. All right, you just, you almost got away with that one, but now you said something like, so who fills in those gaps? Now I'm going to go back to the that, that, um, that we had um, a David Goodhead or some role we had to be in, in inspecting things that we didn't move on that. So I'm talking to my administration now. So what are you saying that your job is just to do? You don't inspect. You don't double back. Like, well, who's going to fill in the gap? Is that our staff that should do that? Where yeah, your be, contract stops? That'll be your staff. Miguel's <coughs> office and. Okay, and, that, and that's. And we can take the. Yeah, that's something for us to think about. We'll take um, off on you. Mark, <coughs> we'll just take that offline. Okay. Yes, we'll allow you to move on. Okay. Just again. <coughs> Thank you, Mount. You're welcome. So, the, uh, this is the Boundary Waters Concession Building, and it's on the. We had a low bid coming on it. It's on the September agenda for <coughs> And also the uh, Sockfield lighting is on the agenda for approval for low bid. Okay. Hopefully we'll get those under construction uh, as soon as we get the contracts executed. Uh, the Deer, Deer Lake Park Tennis Court resurfacing and lighting. Uh, Carter Watkins is currently surveying that. It should be completed and we'll be moving forward with um, the design that over the next month or so. 
And then the multi-purpose rec center, uh, Gary's been working with the uh, parks committee. We've got three schemes that he's developed uh, along with us, meeting with the architect. We've got a public information meeting Thursday to uh, display those. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be coming back to the uh, back to the board for a final decision. Right now, until we get a final decision on um, on one of the schemes, contra uh, the architect is on hold. All right, real quick on that, just just to clarify, and um, <coughs> staff can weigh in on if they want to. So, what will happen on Thursday, uh, which is um, at the aquatic center? What do you plan to accomplish? How will you facilitate? Who's in the room on that day? And get some money. Uh, the architect will be there. Pete Sutton will be there. Okay. And I'll be present. And it'll be primarily to um, have the three schemes on display. Okay. And just basically to open it up, maybe have some short discussions at the beginning and just kind of allow people an opportunity to come in and review the, the schemes and, and provide us some feedback, provide okay. the board some feedback. All right. And that time frame is for what? Uh, Thursday from 6 to 8. 6 to 8. So if they don't hear your opening commentary at the very beginning, they are allowed to just come in and out and look up on the storyboards and say something, or they got to be there. I'm, I'm trying to get a feel. So, because people come at different times and they, they don't yeah. want to get there. Y'all are already closed out and gone because you closed out your, your speech. How, how's it going to work? Well, I think the staff will be there till from 6 to 8. Okay. And maybe have a, an opening um, for those that are there at the beginning. And we can. You know, just it'll kind of continue throughout the, the two hour. <coughs> okay, I, I just didn't want to make sure because we, we had that experience with, right, the, with our right buses right. where we were closing out early. People got there toward the back end and they didn't no. get to give their input. I'm like, well, their input is important. This this one right here is that we we talked about public engagement that people need to have the opportunity. Um, we got to go all the way, no matter what it is, because we're here for the citizens, and so. I know that we're busy and we're after hours with staff and so forth, but the citizens are paying for all of this, and so we need to keep that window of time open, and we need to be uh, have a process in which no matter when they walk in the door, whether it's at 6:02 or you know 7:59, that we've got to catch them. Can you be sensitive to that, please? Yes. So 801, we're going though. Oh, I understand. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, uh, the senior center uh, is. We have, we've already had one public information meeting on it. It's a little bit earlier than we did with the rec center. Um, I was not able to attend. David was there. I think he got some, there was some good input that came in from, through that. And we're meeting with the architect tomorrow to um, share those with him and, and do some more brainstorming on a footprint. Our goal is similar to what we did with the rec center. And that's come out with maybe two or three schemes that we can start putting some pieces together. And then we'll, we'll do another, we'd have one other public information meeting scheduled and then we'll hopefully have those ready uh, for that. Uh, Bill Art and, and Fair Play Boat, we have the designs ready for the concession buildings, and we're going to put that out for bid over, within, over the next couple of weeks. And this is just for the buildings, and we'll get that in, and, and we'll be back to you for um, once the review committee looks at those for a uh, recommendation on the on the bid for those. <coughs> Fair Play Lights uh, replacement is also ready to go out to bid. We'll be, it'll be right back uh, behind the, uh, the concession building. Uh, those are designed and the plans are ready to go out for bid. <coughs> and last is the uh, is Gary's equipment. And I think it's on um, on the agenda for uh, for approval. Mm -hmm. The last slide is our program management expenses and year to date approved invoices is three hundred and twelve thousand. And with that I'll close. I think David Good has a, a short presentation on <coughs> vend uh, vendors if you have uh, if you have time. Mm -hmm. Yes.
right again. My name is uh, David Good. I'm the Spots Communications Director. And we have promised you guys that we're going to talk about um, participation, especially since we're trying to get a lot of the local vendors to come on board. So what you see is that this is as of the end of, um, end of August. Uh, we have 59 current vendors, 18 of which are located here in Douglas County. Um, 19 of them are located within 30 miles of Douglas County, consider those still as local. And then there's 10 <coughs> vendors that's more than 30 miles out, and then there's 12 vendors out of the state of Georgia. <coughs> uh, right now, um, as you can see by this uh, pie chart, 62% um, of them we consider as local, meaning though those that are here in Douglas County are within 30 miles, and then the other 48% um, are located either somewhere else in Georgia or outside the state. Um, so the, the staff, as well as Mona Altabelli, Russell, and myself, uh, we're making sure that we are actually engaging uh, local vendors out of here. A lot of times we do run into people who are from Carroll County that's right there on the border because they do a lot of work here, so we also are engaging them as well. Uh, these are some of the local <coughs> vendors' amount of contracts. Um, I wasn't able to fit every single one of them on there because of space, but I believe this is uh, 14 of the, I think this is 16 of the 18 vendors. Uh, right now you see one, of, one that's added on is a Douglas County LMIG LMA because of that <coughs> amount, 559,000. I decided to go ahead and put it in there because they are, the, you guys are local. So I just want to make sure they able to capture that. And then these are the percentage of active spots. Uh, right now we're at 80% non-minority and 20% that are minority. And that's the end of that, um, of that report. And the main reason that we actually even started doing that is that we wanted to make sure as we're engaging the public, we're letting them know that there are opportunities within the spots. Uh, one of the problems that we do have is that a lot of times when we first came out, we told some of the smaller vendors who could not get some of these larger projects to go ahead and maybe try to come on as a sub or, or something like that. But because I'm not sure there's a way to track it, but there's right now not a way to track those that are subs. That means that if we do a project with C.W. Matthews or someone, if they end up using someone else, there's no way for us to internally track that. So if there is a way for us to internally track that, then this information, the information on the last uh, part might end up looking different, especially when it comes to local. So right now, that's it on the um, vendor spot. Are there any questions on that before I move on to the next part? Any questions from the board? You can move on. OK, and then, so therefore, as you guys know, um, uh, Terry mentioned that we did have a meeting back on September 6th that was about the um, Senior Center. And I appreciate both um, Commissioner Wilkie and Commissioner Mitchell for coming out. Um, it was over at. Cornerstone Baptist Church over there in District 1. Uh, we had about maybe about 50 to uh, 55 to 60 people that came out. Uh, people came in starting a little bit before 4 o'clock, and the last one came in with at um, 6.59. Right, right, yeah. So right before we were able to close out. So we were still there. So I can guarantee you guys that I'm going to stay there you know, for the full time until all questions are asked. So on that senior center, the very next meeting, um, of course, will end up being October 4th, and that's going to be over at uh, First Baptist of Lithia Springs. So that'll be the second meeting of this um, public engagement. And at that meeting, we're planning, like you said, to have some type of format there so people can actually see what it is that we're going to do. Um, again, on this Thursday, we will be having uh, the community, community engagement on the community center. Um, that one is going to be a little bit more robust because we'll actually have something for people to look at, people to make comments on. And then right after that, once that meeting is over, I believe Gary Steen is going to take those projects <coughs> over to Deerlick Park and actually have them on display there so people can come in, make comments over at Deerlick Park. And then at some point in time after that, have a meeting that will be able to bring in the community again so we can go ahead and get um, set an architect to go ahead and start designing it so we can get that build out. So uh, that is it on that part. Are there any other questions? Yeah, do you want to clarify, that? clarify the dates. We had not heard this publicly, so I understand we have something on uh, um, September 20th, which is going to be at Boundary Water, which is the formal um, public engagement input on the multi-purpose community center. Yes. I heard you just say something about dearly. Can I just say that for the record, what the time frame and when and where? Say it again. Okay, uh, right after that meeting on Thursday, yes. those uh, those three displays will be taken over to Deerlick Park. 
and there will be a comment section that, there for people to community to go up in and look at it and actually make comments on there, have like a drop into a comment card and okay. into a comment box. So that's a standing exhibit, is that what I'm hearing? So yes, it's not, yes. it's just there, you've got a drop box. <coughs> yes, sir. Okay, all right, I, I just want to clarify, and how long will that run from Two here? Weeks. Two weeks. So from the 21st to, from that this, that Friday, from this Friday to two Fridays. Two, two Fridays after that. I just want to make sure I capture that and publish it so we tell citizens they can go weigh in. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you, you have a question? question? I think we're good. No, no, I, I, I'm so sorry, sorry, Commissioner yeah. Mitchell. Um, well, good stuff, though, by the way, uh, guys. And, and also, I don't know if you want to share, we got uh, from the programming perspective that we've got a splash for the minute update that's kind of for, that we have forecast to kind of deal with that. If you kind of speak to that, and I got a couple other questions on the side of that. Okay, um, well, not too long ago, we actually had, um, we're doing our quarterly slots up to the minute programming that's on DC 23. Um, myself and Terry, we both uh, spoke with um, Commissioner Mitchell during the interview, and basically, we were giving updates to those projects that were the most current, you know, including boundary waters and soccer field and concession stands, the two um, vertical items coming on board, both the community <coughs> center and the senior center. He spoke on uh, on Motorola, and as you saw on the display, um, the county, as far as the money numbers are, <coughs> the outside of local is going to be a little bit higher because that's fifteen point five million dollars that's going towards Motorola and the um, and the radio system. So those are all things that we spoke on, and we spoke <coughs> at the area where the community center is going um, over there at Boundary Waters. Right. Correct. Uh, which is, which I think are great things to, to be publicized and keep people up to date as to this and where their opinion is being spent. Uh, you spoke about a shortfall, and you hang around, uh, you talk about a shortfall that we're now at roughly about $14,000, I think we're totally, total, yeah, yeah, overall. So, yeah. so if, if we continue this 2.2 and get to the holidays, and my wife and others start shopping even more, we could take that number, that number could kind of increase. Certainly, year to date. Right, so right from the beginning of the program, yes, to, uh, to a positive, uh, but but that's a good thing to note that that the squash projects, the possibilities of them, when we get into that that line of what we're saying, the, the, the bottom of the barrel here, it, it, it's a good possibility that we probably will still do good, even with the numbers that we're dealing with now. But if it increases, that we can probably capture a couple other projects, possibly. I'm not trying to. You know, selling anybody any, any wistful dreams, but that, that is a good possibility if we continue on down this path that right now we're looking thus far. Yes, and, and considering like we've been talking about some of the bids we've got coming in, hopefully the revenues will stay up right. to offset some of that. But let's be let's be honest too, though. The cost of doing business has has gone up. Certainly. Yeah. So realistically, from the parks and rec side of it, from Malk and myself, we're, we're looking at some real numbers that we just have to be honest and understand that that's what they are. Not that we, you know, we want quality, but do understand that the cost of moving dirt, concrete, and others, it's starting to kind of go in a different direction. That's just the cost of doing business. So we kind of you know, expect the numbers that we're going to bring to you for this board down the road. It's going to be some interesting projects and numbers that realistically are what we're going to have to deal with. Right. If not, we talked about at the <coughs> committee level, either we're going to do some shrinking or from square feet, square footage, or um, redesigns, or I mean, there are some other possibilities, but I think the committee is gonna look at possibly saying, these are where the numbers are, and realistically, if you want the project, and what we anticipate, and what we expect, for uh, what our citizens expect, then we need to kind of stay where we are, and deal with the additional cost that we're dealing with, just the cost of doing business, right? Correct? I don't know if Mark yeah. here, he'll probably Concur. chime in like, okay. All righty, um, the radio system. Okay, you, you, you spoke about a couple of, of things where we look at some permits that you're having some, I don't know, I won't call them difficulties, but to kind of move that project along. I mean, help me out again with that, with that statement you made again earlier. They're, they're on track. Uh, okay. I want to hear from Jay and Mark. I think we're on track to, to uh, close at least two of them. I, I mean, I'm hearing some problems with like the city of Douglasville on uh, <coughs> that one as far as what they may or may not decide to do. but. Uh, they're moving forward. We have two property acquisition, yep. two easements. We're working through those. Right. We're right. really close on both of them. So. Yeah. And that and that's kind of sort of what's not slowing the project down, but 
it, it can't move until we can yeah. get that those, part of it. Those two towers are pretty much at a halt. Understood. Until we kind of get there. And, mm -hmm. and I know about those projects, which we've been in executive session talking about them. Okay. The other one, the sidewalk projects. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned that uh, they're, you, you, you we probably won't, we won't let them out until about the end of the year or, or the first of the, of the year. Help me. Yeah, and based on the, the meeting we just had with them, mm -hmm. so they've, they've completed the surveys and gathering all the, the data they needed for the plan. <coughs> um, but we anticipate them to take... Is that all of the sidewalk projects or just... That's all three schools. Okay. Just they're, make sure. both, I mean, all three will be designed at one time and, mm -hmm. and we can make a decision at some point whether we want to let all three of them together or let them out separately. But it'll, it'll take them through probably the fall to design it yeah. and get the plans ready. Yeah. And then at that point, depending on whatever easements that we that need to purchase or right. we need to go after, uh, we'll be in that phase. And yeah, I think it'll have a short fuse. At that point, we, should, we, we may be close to uh, seeing it being led the first quarter of the year, all three of them. And when, See, when we do that, that's when we can look at some more possible, possible of those uh, local and or, because um, these projects are small enough or combined enough to where maybe the local vendors might kind of <coughs> engage <coughs> with it. <coughs> if the dollars and cents, if the yield to the dollar works out, and I, and I know it's about dollars and cents. Right. Correct? And that was a go from the start, was yes. trying to pick up some of the local vendors. Yeah, okay. Um, and again, if you would just, for the record again, yeah. announce those yeah. meeting yeah. dates that we got for the Senior Citizen Center that we've already done, but we got the next one that's coming up. And clearly, let's make, again, for the record, the uh, the boundary waters one, so we can kind of make sure we put that on the record again, so we just, <coughs> so the general public will know kind of where we're going. And we, with the Senior Citizen Center, we we're coming with um, the mere fact of what what you want, with a blank sheet of saying we want your uh, as we did at Cornerstone to kind of give them a good gauge of what they would like to anticipate. And I do understand that it's about dollars. <coughs> we we want the world out of that senior citizen. Plus, we've got to understand that we've got a, a, a small lot that we're having to place this particular building on if, by chance, that works out, you know, with the shape and movement of the design of that. So, just again, the dates and that they are truly understand that they're welcome and their ideas and their thoughts and anything they want to bring to the table, it's always welcome. So. Okay, well, uh, back on September uh, 6th, we actually had the first uh, public engagement <coughs> for the senior center, and that came there with a blank sheet. We just had a couple of Comments from the surveys that we yep. did earlier in the year, people came out. Uh, <coughs> made their comments known, they made their displeasures as yes. as, you know when they felt about parking and all yep. those different things. And then we let the public know at that point in time that there will be another meeting, yes. also on the Thursday on October fourth, from four to six p.m. over <coughs> at um, First Baptist of Fifty Springs. Mm -hmm. And so that in that that one, that's where they'll actually have <coughs> all the information they took. And, and, and for clarity, this is just not for District One. This is for, no, no, this for, is for the entire council. Town. So we come out and and, 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 and and have your your voice heard. Right, and that was a good thing about that meeting yeah. is that people from various parts of the county <coughs> That's correct. Um, came there. Yes. Uh, this one person, you know, came all the way from uh, you know, from Mural Lake, and they were just talking about that you know they were glad to see you know see something coming above, and so they walk in and you know, play pickleball and different right. you know, different things. Right. And so that was a good one for that one. And then of course on Thursday, this coming Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m., that's where we're going to have the, you know, where Boundary Waters Aquatic Center is going to be for the multi-purpose center. And at that one, that's going to be more of the public engagement, you know, to look at what has been put down and saying, well, this is what we can do. And it's going to, it's going to be <coughs> even the dollar amounts and square footage is going to be there even a build out. So right. if we build right. something that's on the medium size, mm -hmm. it'll show a build out of bigger. Mm -hmm. And then right after that meeting, we'll take those displays over to Deer Lake Park, and then for two weeks have that there, and then people can make their comment cards at that particular location. And, and the only reason I want to kind of reiterate that is that we're doing everything we can to assure for those who want to have a, a take at this, which I'm, I'm assuming everybody in Douglas County would like to have what they would like to see and have at the Senior Citizen Center to include at the Boundary Water. So your input, your, your information is definitely you know warranted. Uh, I did also add from the programming <coughs> that we at least make sure that this goes up on the website. Uh, any exposure that we can get by sending out email blasts, which I normally do, and I, I would probably assume that all the other people <coughs> do the same thing as to these particular dates. So those that would want to attend uh, know the exact time, know the exact dates, and if they can't get there during the time frame that we've offered, 
that using the boundary waters piece that it'll be there for at least two weeks that you can still comment. Now, we won't be there to you know, talk about the misplay, but at least if you can look, read, and understand, and you would like to see X, then write it down, put it in the, the comment box, because it will come back to the programming, not the programming committee, it will come back to the Parks and Rec committee <coughs> to kind of validate all of the, the comments, and we plan to read them all, and we plan to understand what they all are asking, and then come up to this, this resolve of what this really will look like or what this really will become. So. Again, thank you guys for all the hard work and all the due diligence. I just want to make sure that we share that with the general public. So, outside of that, I'll yield back. And then the, um, the very last thing is that now that we're seeing these intersections, such as the intersection at Chapel Hill, and the same with um, Highway 5 and Douglas Boulevard, there will be also opportunity in order to do public comments on those once we you know, get to a part on there where we feel that we can come to the public with a design so they'll know what's coming when those streets are going to start changing. So I appreciate you guys' time. Okay, thank you so much. We're going to move right along. So thank you all so much thank for you. the presentation. Our board of commissioners, I ask that you take a look at our minutes for tomorrow and we will approve accordingly. Any administration, uh, administrator, do you have a comment or anything? No. Okay. And next, uh, also we'll have a proclamation tomorrow uh, recognizing the uh, graduate chapter Sigma, Omega, Omega, Alpha, Kappa, Alpha. So that'll be on tomorrow. So I'll move to tab number five, which is our business item. Authorization to approve the Livable Centers Initiative, LCI, amendment to the previously approved Sweetwater Master Plan for submission to the Atlanta Regional Commission. Uh, Ron Roberts, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Madam Chair, Commissioners, thank you very much for the opportunity. So I wanted to go back and uh, kind of update where we are. This document was approved by the Board of Commissioners in July of last year. <coughs> Moving forward, um, it was uh, in looking at it in the beginning of the year, I realized that this is a document um, that could very, very much play an important role as a livable centers initiative, which would open us up for some transportation funding specifically in the Sweetwater Corridor. <coughs> so July 10th of this year, we reached out to Kimley Horn, who had made the initial plan and, <coughs> and um, uh, granted permission to move forward with updating this so that it fits into the LCI format, specifically as it relates to the transportation five-year study. <coughs> um, so that, that could be incorporated into the document and then brought back before you today. The, uh, uh, the project manager on this has been Beth Turner and Eric Bosman, they're both with me today. And one of them, both of them will be here tomorrow for the uh, commission meeting as well. So this is really, that's what this is. We, we asked in July to move forward to create the <coughs> components which are included in your packet. And we want to, to redo the document and then submit it as a Liberal Centers Initiative to the Mount Regional Commission. Okay. And if you have any questions for me or the, the project leaders on this. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> Our Commissioner Geiger. Yes, Ron. Uh, last time it was presented to us, we talked about the sort of roundabout right there for the trucks that have to do. And we wondered why we had to have a roundabout because the other two roads leading off of it are not <coughs> truck roads. So didn't we talk about taking that uh, that roundabout out? Uh, the the projects were uh, <coughs> reorganized. Um, I know that the, it still appears in there as a as a, as a future potential. Uh, the projects were actually reorganized for the purposes of that from July of last year until until now. We've had so many rezonings and things that have come through in that area that have actually shaped what would happen. So I mean. Uh, moving forward, the, the <coughs> projects that are in here would, kind of, would probably s would stay, but they may <coughs> change in some shape, form, or fashion, but they've been prioritized with the uh, staff's recommendation uh, after sitting down with Miguel. Mm -hmm. But as far as like the removal of the, uh, of the, the roundabout altogether, I don't know if we really want to do that. It's going to be hard for a <coughs> tractor trailer to go around the roundabout. Mm -hmm. It would just go straight through, especially since the lead-off roads. Mm -hmm. Are no truck roads. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, uh, you, that is a recommendation that was approved already in the original plan. We didn't really want to alter or do anything other than this just to beef it up and make it 
an application for local centers initiative. So that all the projects that were in project A that were approved, you know, we didn't really want to change those. That would be uh, kind of like having to revisit the whole document, I think, in and of itself. Okay. Well, the, the document itself just listed from a, an action plan and a funding standpoint, just listed as an intersection improvement. <coughs> Ultimately, it's up to your public works folks to determine what the format of the intersection improvement needs to be. But for this purpose and to get it in line for funding, it's just an intersection improvement. The, the format's left open. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Okay. I yield back. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, Vice Chairman Robson? Yeah, and, and, and again, I'm, I'm sensitive, and I appreciate all the work that's being done here, and the fact that you brought this around to try to enhance the, the Sweetwater Plan Master Plan with this LCI component, and, and so it's well done. You know, I, I this area is is, is, is improving, obviously, um, from what it was about three, four, five years ago, when this, this board of commission declared that area a slum and blight. Right, in that it, we know coming out of recession, there need to be redevelopment in that whole corridor. But a lot of work has been done, and we appreciate the, the SPLOS obviously putting 10 million in that area um, as a dedicated source because it was <coughs> important. It, it aged, right? We, we know that there's a lot of congestion that comes along Camp Creek, Thornton Road, I-20 right there, and the fact that it, it, it's showing that <coughs> there's a commitment to that area um, goes a long way. Uh, we've got residents that are living over there. We've got commercial businesses that are committed there. They put money into that. And so the fact that I, and I'm, I'm highlighting, uh, we were just at a, um, a ribbon cutting for one of the hotelers um, <coughs> over there. Um, some of you may know Dr. Mukesh Patel, who um, is the proprietor of the um, Hilton Hotel, who, um, where we hold our constitutional officer meeting every year um, um, in, in that hotel, built a new hotel right next door. And for that person to sit there, renovate an entire hotel, and build a new one at the same time, it just wanna, I, I want to highlight the fact that we're, we're trying to enhance the whole area and we're having to protect it. Um, I, I guess to that point about congestion. In your map, and I, I said all that to say because all of this is related. Um, and, and, and to Madam Guy's point, I hear her quite, quite, quite clearly on, on certain areas. In the plan, um, how will we deal with the what where we're opening up so much? We're still, I, I still haven't heard the truck problem solved. We continue to track the light pressure <coughs> because of the master plan over there. But what is coming down the pipe if you can share so far? Because all I'm hearing is light industrial and I'm hearing truck traffic. Uh, I know the master plan plan, I, I get that. We're saying this for the record because you still got citizens that they're seeing a huge commercial input over there. How are we balancing that? And I'm just asking the question. Well, the, uh, you know, the county and the city both adopted the quality growth overlay, and that's very specific in how it lays out <coughs> safety components between the residential and the, the infrastructure of commercial and industrial in that corridor. So there, there's that component that's in there already. Um, I'm, I'm, and moving forward with, uh, with to, to see actually what comes in, and I've had some discussions with Miguel uh, on the, the, that's how we reordered the, the, the list of projects. And, and that's, a, that's a very big highlight of what <coughs> the funding from, from the Atlanta Regional Commission for an LCI would actually be, would be to, they're looking for those you know, safety components, they're looking for those, that, uh, that border and differentiation between the residential and, yeah. and the commercial industrial so that they can both live well in this, in this area. And one thing I did forget to mention <coughs> Because this was adopted by the board in July of last year, and we went through just finished the comprehensive <coughs> transportation plan, which we uh, sent over to DCA uh, last work session. Um, the this document is also included in the consideration of that comprehensive land use plan going forward, so that it's a holistic look at all the the, the integrations that would, would occur or could occur. Well, well, well done. No, no need to belabor that. I mean, you, you answered my final question was, are, is everything being aligned? And it sounds like it is because we do have the comprehensive plan. We do have all these other elements, but it looks like I'm chairing it. <coughs> and he's got it. So I get yeah. it. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to tab number. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We'll move to tab number six, approval of the Federal Trans Administration mandated Title VI non-discrimination program for the multi Mobile Transportation Services Connect Douglas. Uh, we have Mrs. Levita Walker here this morning. I'm standing up. Good morning again. I'm here for requesting approval of our Title VI non-discrimination program and policy for 
the multiple transportation division services. And we have to update this policy every three years, and this is our year. Okay. And I believe you have, you all should have a copy of that. Okay. Any, any questions for Ms. Walker? Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Tab number seven, authorization to award a contract to the to the LOS uh, group to provide and uh, install a new electronic content management system for a total cost of $82,188 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Uh, on June the 5th, we uh, released a request for a proposal <coughs> for vendors to submit proposals for a new electronic content management system. Um, the due date was Friday, July the 13th. We received 11 proposals that ranged from 58,000 all the way up to 650,000 to implement this new um, system that we need. Um, there were several uh, evaluation committee meetings uh, that included um, our um, director of, uh, for document records retention in the, in the county as well as for, from the <coughs> Um, voter registration office uh, and other members of the staff uh, we, as well as the IT director uh, and we're bringing to the commission today that request to allow us to award the contract to the local <coughs> group for $82,188. Demonstrations were made by a couple of the vendors and we feel that this vendor would best meet the needs of the county as we attempt to um, uh, maintain and be able to access the documents of the county. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? Commissioner Bader. Okay. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this is, um, <laughs> thank you. This is the system that um, Aubrey Britt will use oh, okay. for all of the electronic for, for documents. Yeah. Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, <clears throat> The electronic <laughs> content management system. Okay, <laughs> it, it, it did go through our uh, committee. Uh, yes, technology we, actually, committee. we actually have the letter dated August yes. the 30th. <laughs> well, now that I know what it is, I know it went through our committee. I didn't know what you were talking about at first. <laughs> so I yield back. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to tab number eight. Tab number eight is authorization to award a contract to integrated construction for the construction of the concession stand at Boundary Waters Park for the total cost of $709,747.34 to be funded through the 2016 SWASH funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Director Peacock again. Yes, ma'am. The due date for the bids for the uh, construction of the concession stand was Friday, July the 13th. We received four bids that ranged from 709,000 all the way up to 999,000. Uh, again, the, the evaluation committee consisting of Parks and Rec, myself, and the other members of the county staff, as well as the uh, uh, the Parks and Rec's committee, is recommending that we uh, that the board al allow us to award the contract for integrated construction. <coughs> For seven hundred nine thousand seven hundred forty-seven dollars and thirty-four cents, uh, we believe that that they have the expertise and the experience needed to provide us with an excellent building. Okay. Any questions for the board? <coughs> now, good. We'll move on to the next tab. Yes, I'm oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this includes restrooms and concession. Yes, ma'am. So this is going to be about the price for all the other parks that we're going to be building. In the well, th this is really going to be structured. It, it, it's going to service both the football field and the soccer field. So you got two concessions. You got two windows. concessions, and, and uh, two s the bathrooms are the same. But you also have some upstairs <coughs> meeting rooms, uh, as well as the uh, press box. <coughs> what I'm saying, this is kind of in the ballpark for the other parks. Just trying to <coughs> estimate about fair play and. The, and the other parks are, we believe, will be cheaper. Yeah, because this is a dual service building. Okay. I think some of the expenses that we've heard may be $350,000 or more or less for the individual parks at Fairplay. And does that sound? 350? Yeah. 300,000? 600. 600 each? Okay, 600 each. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yes, to okay. your right. question. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, I will say it, it kind of right. set our, our committee back on our heels when we 
when we heard this price. So we right. we explored some options. Uh, you know, can we uh, we do the second floor later? Or right. Eliminate the second yes. floor. That, that was the, the large one that I that I called in memory. Uh -huh. And uh, the consensus was it wasn't going to save us that much right. money. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I would say like mid mid uh, you know five figures or something like that. It wasn't going to save us a lot of money. Right. Right. We figured we'd just go ahead. And, and bite the bullet. We're going to run into this is through many yeah, of the yes. SPLOS projects. Yes. We're hoping for a continued uptrend in, in the SPLOS collections because the construction costs, concrete, steel, and, and everything else, they're going to continue to go up. Hopefully, you know, for the benefit of the entire country and the county, they'll continue to go up. Uh, I want to wish wish you all on the, on the economy so we can save some money on a, on a, on a concession stand. So, but we did look at some options and it just didn't seem plausible. Okay. I yield back. Okay. Commissioner Mitchell. Yeah. And I'll just add to, to Vice Chair, um, <coughs> well, Parks and Rec, you, the, the, this cost per square feet is is going up. So <coughs> it, I don't want her to get the, uh, Commissioner Dyer to get the wrong perception that, you know, that it costs, I mean, it's going to be a, a saving somewhere that, that you, <coughs> it's going to cost us doing business, uh, steel, concrete, and everything else. Per square feet when we go down or when we look at anything that we're building when we talk about brick and mortar <coughs> down the road. So I think these numbers are what we came up with that said, you know, this uh, who's gonna save somewhere between thirty or forty thousand dollars. So why 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 not just eat that and deal with the quality of what we want or what, what we anticipate that those that are expecting the best out of this boss dollar. So let's go ahead and you know, we'll deal with that accordingly. So we just kinda move forward with the particular project at the seven oh nine. So <clears throat> well, yes, we did talk about some other ways of building something later, building it, you know, shortening out, <clears throat> shrinking it down, or building a co-ed bathroom. I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but at the end of the day, uh, we had to come up with some, we had to realistically, realistically look at the true numbers, and, and they really are going up in cost, and I just, that just was the cost of doing this. So, I yield back. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think this is is worthy of a, a policy debate because it's <coughs> this is I mean, I'm rather to have a conversation regarding SPLOS than the general fund. Um, so I mean, obviously, in keeping these two separate, we're blessed to have a SPLOS because to have a general fund conversation with this, it would be real tough. Uh, all right. That being said, listen to the narrative. Listen to what what was just said earlier on this um, by um, our, our program manager. Is that it's it's our the ta or the tax conversation. Taxes are coming in, but everything is growing, what, 1%? 1% growth. Think about wages of the citizens <coughs> only growing 1%. But if inflation outstrips that, <coughs> the upside, so I'm like, I'm listening to you, I'm like, guys, again, we, I mean, it, it, and I get every community is going to be a little bit different. I'm not suggesting we need to have a common rule set regarding this. But I anticipate, like, we're <coughs> hoping, like, no, guys, but wages are not going up as fast as inflation. It doesn't work that way. And so that means that you're gonna, I mean, so we're hoping, you know, let's plan for, make an assumption about what that growth is gonna be, right? Else you're gonna have to, things that are on the list, down the list, just can't get done because you've got other stuff that are up the list that's a priority that has a higher cost. Let that be, the, let that be our consensus <coughs> trade-off on this, our consensus <coughs> rule, get the quality we want. Uh, because now you've got a higher cost, it costs you 1.5 versus 1 million dollars. That's fine. That means that whatever's downstream at a half million just gets it gets pushed down. We're not required to do that. We did this by percentages, so there's not some implied. Oh God, we made this prompt. No, we didn't. So we've got room to do that. But I'm, I'm just saying, don't. It, right. I'm with you. The, the economy is going to keep growing. Right. Commercial is going to be you know inflation. They can aluminum. Everything else is going to kick in. But people, are, our salaries are not going up. They're going up barely, right? So though they're doing good, they can spend a little more. And there are some raises, guys. Inflation is going up high. I mean, we're, are y'all not looking at this? That's what I'm like, okay. This is just more of a, let's be sensitive that we understand the variables. It's not us guys falling, but it's like, okay, watch this, guys. That's why I said try to have a hedge against, as it goes up, you know, this implied savings that we got is like steady, guys, steady. But it's just a word. Uh, I mean, you guys know what you're doing in your committees, uh, and I'll be flexible in working with you guys as it comes across. So I do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
authorization to award a contract to West Georgia Lighting Incorporation for the installation of new lighting at the Boundary Water Site <coughs> Field for the total cost uh, of $295,913 and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock again. Yes, ma'am. This is the second part of the work that we want to have done out at Boundary Waters. Uh, we've been talking about lighting the soccer fields. We postponed that bringing it to the commission until we uh, had a, um, a firm uh, or a good price on what it would co uh, cost to build the concession stand. And so now since we know that, we, we uh, got competitive bids on the lighting. West Georgia Lighting uh, for an LED, uh, all LED bid, theirs was $295,913, which is considerably less than the other vendor. So we're recommending that we go with uh, uh, West Georgia Lighting to install LED lighting for that amount of money, $295,913. Okay, any questions from the board? Sounds like it's pretty self-explanatory. Thank you so much. We'll move to tab number 10, <coughs> authorization to accept the <coughs> Georgia Beautiful Foundation Little Law Enforcement Grant in the amount of $900 to amend the external affairs budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Director Stanley. Good morning, commissioners. Um, I came before you in August um, of 2018 to ask to, uh, permission to apply for this grant. We have been awarded $900 to hold the Little Law Enforcement Workshop grant. I mean, workshop. We will be partnering with Keep Douglasville Beautiful. Um, <coughs> we'll be bringing in a speaker from the Georgia Department of Natural Resources um, to give training to all of our law enforcement officers um, from um, anywhere from Highway Patrol to the Sheriff to our local police officers to our code enforcement, and it will be open to the citizens. <coughs> so we just ask for permission to accept the grant. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's good. I think that answers in response to myself and the commissioners. I when we had a concern. We said, when we put those signs back out, saying it's a, a fine regarding litter, Bigger and this sure. allows a larger signs. But she said training was required first. Uh, so thank you for moving this along. Tab number 11, authorization to accept the Georgia Department of Agriculture Dog and Cat Stabilization <coughs> Grant in the amount of six thousand one hundred dollars and amend the animal services budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents director mcmillan good morning yes we're excited to receive this grant of sixty one hundred dollars from the georgia department of agriculture uh, it's specifically to be used to sterilize uh, dogs and cats made available for adoption to our citizens so this helps us set desires to those adoptions <coughs> so we can um, lower our adoption costs and prevent barriers to adoption. Okay. Any questions for the board? Commissioner Bulk here. Yeah. <coughs> Getting off script a little bit here, would you give us the status of the occupancy at the shelter? We have 244 <coughs> animals at this time. Uh, 144 of those are cats and the rest are dogs. How many total? 244, oh, which two is a high capacity for us right now, so <coughs> we're in our busy season. And we're working hard to provide promotions uh, <coughs> to see that our animals are adopted and we say blast. All right, then put in context, but do we have any empty uh, pens? <coughs> Not very many. Okay. <laughs> are you all right? Okay. You should have got, um, Robinson, did you have yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, that was my same question with when we had this conversation because <coughs> I reached out to the Director McMillan regarding this recent, just as a, you know, a, a check and balance as I do. Um, so we're at capacity. Um, are we? Um, um, do we have any euthanizations? <coughs> do we? Do we, do we this? Our live release rate right now is at eighty nine percent, which is very good. This is one of the highest in the state. We are not euthanizing adoptable <coughs> animals at this time. We're able to work with three promotions with uh, volunteers and rescues. Uh, to keep that flow going, to get them in and out, we are picking up a large volume of animals <coughs> right now. So, euthanizing would be animals that um, are severely injured that we can't remedy, yep. or severely aggressive <coughs> animals that we can't adopt out. Okay. The reason I asked that, I remember when we were going through, you guys remember when we were going through recession, people were just like they're throwing in their keys, they were just throwing in their pets. <coughs> like we had that experience with our old animal shelter, you know, it's, it's much, much, much smaller. Um, what, what's driving this spike now? I mean, gee, I thought we, 
we built this to have capacity. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to reconcile, again, I'll lean to my peers who have a little bit more insight around um, animals. But what's driving this, right? Because we're supposed to have a bigger shelter. And, it, and so one, answer that question. Two, do you have the personnel to support it? Now, and I'll yield after that. We have uh, hired some temporary personnel to help us through this increase. We hope that the increase doesn't continue past the summer. We've had a lot of kittens come in, um, some puppies, but we're also picking up a lot of dogs off the street that are stray. One of the most, uh, the best things that healthy shelter is return to owner rate. Right now it's at 28%, which is very high, but we want that to be a lot higher. So we're working on solutions to help our animals get back home to the owners. <coughs> and we're launching a new virtual pet website. It'll be a virtual shelter online, so citizens can look for their pets <coughs> online at any time, and they can notify us if their pet is in the shelter and they can get that pet back to them. That's good. That's, mm -hmm. that, that's a good idea. That's, that's creative. Mm -hmm. okay. Virtual. It was great. Okay. Yeah. Well, well thank, you. thank you so much, uh, Director McMillan. We'll move on to tab thank number you. 12, which is authorization to approve a strategic alliance um, memora memorandum with the United States Small Business Administration and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Um, Director Stanley, and also I believe we have our executive director of uh, Chamber here today as well. So if you could go up, if you may have a question for you as well. Uh, Director Stanley, could you just enlighten us? Thank you. Good morning again, Commissioner. So in February of 2018, President Trump um, appointed Ashley Bell, former Fall County Commissioner, to be our uh, Regional Administrator for the U.S. Small Business Administration. Um, one of his focuses is reaching out to a lot of the local um, and state officials to try to foster better cooperation between um, the administration and local government. Um, so he, um, I've been working with him and his district director, as well as State Representative William Bodie and the president of our chamber, to try to bring those resources to Douglas County. What you have before you is a memorandum that just simply asks for Douglas County to enter into a strategic alliance with the Small Business Administration to make sure that we can adequately get those resources here to help um, better get our small businesses involved, get more funding, and also to get um, just better participation. <coughs> Uh, yeah, but, yeah, come in. I don't really have anything. I don't really have anything else to add other than I mean, our mission of the chamber is to support and promote business as <coughs> businesses for the advancement of our community. So this is just a kind of another piece of our toolkit to be able to help do that on a bigger level. So, <coughs> so yeah. okay. Any questions from the board? I think it's that's great. Thank you all so much. You have a comment. No, I mean, it, it hurt you <laughs> rattle. Yeah, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. And really, uh, again, I'm glad to hear um, Ashley um, Bell's ascension um, as our regional. As you guys recall, when I first came on board, Terry Dennison was the district um, director for Small Business Administration. We're promoting, incubator, we're promoting incubators um, back during the recession. And obviously, it's 10 years later. I think we're ripe for true growth um, outside of. You know what I call T-shirt companies. Uh, there's nothing wrong with my, my sister who you know does, but we're looking for something that's really can be in the Atlanta Business Chronicle, can really be scalable, really be taxable, etc. <coughs> um, but this here, um, what's your next step? What what comes out of this? I mean, I recognize the initiatives going on with. Um, um, can are you at liberty to talk about what? Um, sure. Yes. Representative Bodie is thinking right. and, and what the just. Yes, yeah. I will. So one, the, fir the first step in order to get the alliance going was to get um, strategic alliance memorandums with the county and the city. And I believe the city manager will be presenting this to the uh, um, city council either today or sometime this week. And then after th those memorandums are signed, then they will get partnership agreements with the chamber and possibly economic development. Um, one of the things that we do have in the works is a, um, is a forum or a, a, um, some, some sort of um, event where um, people from State Representative William Bowie's district will be able to come and there will be speakers from the SBA, um, different speakers from different economic development authorities, um, Connect South Fulton, <coughs> Select Fulton, a lot of different um, authorities will be there speaking. Um, and we will also have, there will be lenders on hand. The lenders who um, do SBA back loans will be on hand <coughs> to be able to give information to people from the district um, on how to apply for loans. There'll also be a session on how to do a business plan. There'll be actually someone instructing people, giving them basic information on how to do a one-page business plan. 
So it's basically working with our local officials, though I will also be asking some of our local officials to um, be on some of those um, panels, giving information to our citizens um, on how they can better cooperate with our local government and our authorities on how they can do business. So that's the, the next step is actually getting that um, event together, and that event is, is scheduled for October 20th, I believe between 9 and 2, at the Georgia um, International Center, the one by the airport. And then we will also bring something closer to Douglas <coughs> County in the future, but that will be open to citizens from Douglas County and all of the other citizens from District 62, which includes South Wilson as well. Okay. If you can send those states to the Board of Commissioners, so we <coughs> Yes, I will. Okay. Thank you so much, both of you all. We'll move on to the next item. Uh, tap number 13, authorization to use the SWASH equipment funds to purchase lawn maintenance equipment at a total cost of $13,414.92, as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Good. Yes, ma'am. These are mowers and trimmers that we use to maintain the park system, keep them groomed, keep grass cut. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, medium-sized mowers all the way uh, up to the large commercial mower. Okay. And it comes as a recommendation from the Oversight Recreation Oversight Committee, and it come out of the two comes out of the 2008 <coughs> loss. Okay. Any questions for the board? All right. We move on to the next one, tab number 14. Thank you, Director Dukes. Yes, ma'am. Authorization to approve a lighting um, agreement with the Georgia Department of Transportation for the county to accept responsibility for the ongoing power service operation, repair, and maintenance of the lighting system upon GDOT's completion of the State Route 5 in Dorset Shoals, Banks, Mill, Pool Road, Roundabout and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner. This, uh, this project, uh, I believe there was about two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago, there was a public meeting and there was input uh, that affected the design of the uh, concept report has been approved. And, and incidentally, this is a project worth about $10 million that is entirely funding, uh, funded by the, G, uh, the Georgia DOT with one exception, and that is what is before you today. Typically, what they uh, require is for the local government to uh, take over the maintenance and the power requirements for all the lighting that associated with the project. Now, it hasn't been designed in, in full detail, so we do not know exactly what that's going to look like, but it, it will incur a monthly uh, power bill, and if there's any issues related to the uh, power the bill themselves, and if there's any issues related to the, uh, the fixtures themselves, then the essentially to, uh, the Georgia DOT will require that essentially the role of Georgia DOT will require that they do the county of the role of the government for this district that they do. Uh, this so slide have agreement before they the concept report design they are right. so they have to begin the approve the concept design. report but they need they are this piece so they have to begin the okay. design okay. but they need this <coughs> before they have a question for Commissioner Jagger for you. Okay. Uh, well let's move on background about it. Some one day it's not a background about it. Some of the one day it's not a background about it. Some of the one day it's not a background about it. Some of the one day it's not a background about it. Some of the one day it's not a background about it. Some of the one day it's not a background about it. I don't know whether there was a general agreement with the county or not, and I don't know whether there was a 
form a look to see whether that's counting or not. I think are you talking about for the maintenance? Look for the, for the maintenance. maintenance uh, not. Uh, there are separate the agreements for the lighting. For the maintenance. For the maintenance. Uh, there are separate the agreements. One for the lighting. My understanding is that there wasn't a lot of landscape analysis. My understanding is that there wasn't a lot of landscape in this sign of that was uh, uh, installed in, in the middle. There was uh, apparently a sign that was at uh, one point which uh, in the middle was uh, around about uh, one point which uh, was uh, <laughs> and uh, so, so they are and, uh, so they are they are responsible for maintenance unless there is a formal agreement they would be responsible for the However, uh, my understanding is that uh, as it exists, that for a however, while, uh, my understanding is that the sheriff's office for a while uh, having a uh, sheriff's office might be some of the uh, having a detail bill. Well, the complaints I hear is why do they make us put all these? Uh, well, the complaints I hear is why do they make us put all these? And we do that at the other maintenance. Intersections, we and, and we do that. Other uh, anybody uh, uh, intersections, we have all these sidewalks. We could get with anybody to make them. A lot of times, the grass is actually growing whatever you want to do to them. A lot of times, the grass is actually growing. I guess it's because that's just the way DOT. But I guess it's because that's just the way DOT. Uh, so many operate, they require the back, so many that uh, the county has to do. But I really need to know uh, what we can do, do about maintaining but I really that's need one of the first what we can do uh, about maintaining that. That's one of the sign first of being you in Douglas uh, County, so to speak. Sign uh, of being uh, you in Douglas County several miles so to speak. Uh, the county line. Uh, <coughs> but that's I know it's we several used to have a big sign county line. But that's and we don't have any we used to have a big sign and it said it's not growing up in we don't have anything there. And, and I'm not sure what I've been weeds. There aren't any lights right now. 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 So, why didn't they put the lights in? They finished the project. Well, I, I don't know, uh, why, Commissioner, why that there were the lights, lights associated with well, the project. Well, I, I don't know, <coughs> that Commissioner, that there were the lights associated with the project. I'm going to have to go back to the project. Back to the GDOT and try and get some. Um, my understanding is that, that, that it was under that project a minimal design. Uh, my understanding is that, that it was a, a minimal design yeah. sign of that. No more landscaping, no more than the lights. Uh, yeah, for the, for the lights, that, that, that would be. Again, it's typical. Yeah, for the, the, for the lights that, that, that would be. That, again, it's agreement. typical of the design, the extent of the lighting on this room. Define but the the, uh, the extent of the lighting. It is possible that they decided uh, that no lighting was uh, necessary. It is possible that they decided that no lighting was necessary. I don't know. There were a lot of wrecks because the county is surprised there were about it and they were mad about it. They said that this whole thing is a big sign for us. They're mad about it. But could you look into the maintenance part of it? Could you look into the maintenance part of it? But if we're to maintain it, we need to maintain yeah. it in some way. Gardeners, uh, you know, if they decide <coughs> to do it or something. Can we the plant some flowers, flowers in the middle of it? You know, if they decide to do it. There's just nothing but grass there. Can we there. plant some flowers in the middle of it? Absolutely. There's just nothing but grass there. It's not very sightly. There's uh, absolutely. Uh, I will follow up with the Georgia DFT to try and get the definition. I will follow up with the Georgia DFT to try and get the definition on that. Whether they. Accepting the their responsibility, or whether or they recognize their responsibility, accepting their responsibility, or maybe they or have they recognized their responsibility for maintenance, or maybe they want have a lot of agreement, that then we will begin now is responsible for that we are, and then we will they begin. Were supposed uh, to put lights. Uh, assuming that there's more lights. And if they lights. were supposed to put lights, I don't know, as a, before the intersection lights, I don't know, at the meeting before the intersection was redone. It was lighted as well. As you, huh? It was lighted as well. It was lighted, yes. It was lighted as well. As well. As you, huh? It was lighted as well. It was lighted, yes. That was but the car is actually <laughs> there. I just want to mount. I would like it in the middle of the coming back. I just wonder if they I would like it in report on how many acts have been the years since they redid the intersection to see if it's been used. Is there a need for additional line? Because is there a need for two main line weights coming together there? 
Because it tracks you, trailers you've got two main uh, highways cutting through, through together there. Um, and the tractor trailers are uh, cutting through them. Caps Ferry Road, <coughs> 166. Coming back from Florida. Uh, yeah, they even they come down Caps Ferry uh, Road. They hit one speed down in Florida. Caps Ferry, they come on 166. Speed down all the Caps Ferry. They come on 166 to avoid all the interchange and everything. Just give me a report back and see what we can do to spruce it up a little bit. Just give me a report back and see what we can do to spruce it up a little bit. Next item. Number, um, I'm going to move 15. on to the authorization to approve supplemental agreement um, number two. RJ Haynes. Authorization to approve supplemental agreement road to section traffic. RJ Haynes. Signal project to add parkway and house road section traffic. Signal display project to add chairman to sign. Auxiliary document. A signal display authorizes the chairman to sign. Yes, chairman. What happened is the installation was what happened is the project is how we took a look at the line. Was the intersection and realized that uh, we took a look at the alignment of the intersection, of the intersection and realized that then traffic travels west in the intersection to wrap around the then about the three here does it see the intersection so this they are with light about this way rather than being in the end uh, so this uh, light the side rather than being in the middle of the intersection with a light offset to the side so that I had a C where the light is green or red ahead of the intersection um, thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. 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 As you might recall, as part of this, and this is actually as you might recall, as part of this for initially there was one allocation for and transportation uh, equipment. We have found that one and have and uh, 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 and uh, and uh, and we have found that we have a more urgent that it is not funded in year maintenance that it is not funded in year maintenance cluster that it is not funded in year on bridges cluster. Uh, and so what we are asking as a result and so what we are asking as a result of uh, this spring uh, and, and getting summer, into the milling and uh, uh, essentially uh, wearing out a lot of the tractors and uh, uh, essentially wearing out a lot of those tractors uh, uh, in fact the uh, uh, refined maintenance experience I've missed uh, to the tune of about that would find out on a couple of these equipment so far to the tune of about thirteen thousand. That piece of equipment has been out in commission this year, eighty five days. And that piece of equipment has been out in commission. Only the expenditure which is which is it is very high. Only the expenditure which is which is getting but also it takes that piece of equipment out of commission for an but also it takes that piece of equipment out of commission for an extractor at the time waste so those some of them still have get a little light when tractors and to the extent of that some of them we can have a little light weapon and until the extent that right down to we can we still use them and hand or circles a great down to the point where they are fat they're no longer circles and then what you know the use of money and it's going to take a certain period of time to have several months and it's going to take a certain period of time, perhaps several months, on approval by the board for us to actually have order and deliver equipment on a ready by the board. And so we're asking an additional allocation ready for start from the SPLOS. So we're asking an additional allocation from the SPLOS for that purpose. These particular pieces of equipment have been requested. These, at least a couple of pieces of equipment have been requested. Is that correct? At least a couple of pieces of cycles, as I recall. Is that correct? I was going to say two or three, but okay. Uh, that that oh, gives some background. <laughs> I was going to say two or three, but okay. Uh, that that gives some background to pressing the need uh, to support this. Really, really kind of okay. uh, pressing the point here. I was just confirming with my colleagues. Good thing, Mr. Chair. I mean, we did discuss this on our transportation committee. And, and again, committee, trying, we did discuss this during our transportation committee. And, and again, just trying to be consistent. Since there's a million dollars worth of supplemental funding, there's probably about. 
almost a million dollars worth of supplemental um, funding is ten yeah, items for million dollars. But staff was um, we came to a consensus um, the agreement is ten items for million dollars three should be funded. Um, we came to a consensus uh, based on agreement that the maybe more top three should be funded. We're trying to go through a cycle uh, again based on discipline is this okay, okay, just because it's there and then trying to go through a cycle and then discipline is a real justification there and then we but I wanted to highlight that let's come up with real just that we recognize the need and it's on the list. I wanted to highlight that maybe just that we recognize the need and it's on the list. Um, even in committee, uh, we are pushing through those things. Okay. We think that they need. Um, we move on to tab number 17, authorization to approve the public okay. governmental agreement. We move on to tab number 17, authorization to approve the Baker's Bridge between Dell Road and Sweet Water Street Road, Dell Baker's Bridge Road and Sweet Road, Sweet Water Street Road, Dell Road, High Point Road intersection. Now, this is a project that's been around for a while, and this is a project that's been around for a while, and it's been as was indicated, presentation and uh, design has been presentation and finalized. There are some tweaks. Design has been right of way nearly finalized. There are some tweaks being done for the right of way and some better definition of acquisition. We need before we can actually engage in the right of way acquisition. So we have the total. I think as our maybe three four months ago we had having the total four or five as our sort of a new design we're looking at having to acquire. And as a result of a redesign of the county and the county and Polton County County is very one small parcel and and Polton County for the other are very one small parcel and just settlers along the road. Finalizing the design, this agreement essentially says that finalizing the design, this agreement essentially says that just in splitting the cost of the project, which anticipate at the last that splitting the cost of the project, which something at the last estimate was approaching a million dollars. So the exposure to the county would be about half a million. So the exposure to the county would be about half a million. Thank you so much, Director Valentini. Uh, we'll move on to tab number 18, authorization to approve the 2019 board meeting for work session, commission meeting, planning and zoning board meetings and various hearings. Like you said, the proposed work based on board meeting, like you said, the proposed work based planning and zoning and various meetings for the I think the only difference you're going to see is less meetings for the planning and zoning. I think the only difference you're going to see is less meetings for the planning and zoning. Otherwise, everything is going to be sad. It's only 18. Board of Commissioners, you have these states before you. Otherwise, everything is just sad. I encourage you to take a look at them if you see you have these states before you. So you can decide. I encourage you to take a look at them if you see anything. All right, we'll move to tab number 19. Authorization to approve the 2019 Douglas County Employee Benefit Offering. And authorized to yes, chair of the sign, all related to the Yes, here, this is a recommendation. I'll yield the benefits from all care. This is a recommendation that's coming from some of the benefits that could be made over the last couple of years. Some not experiencing any changes for the last couple of years. We're not experiencing any changes here. This has been very good. We've held so our claim is that the experiences have been very good. To, uh, so uh, we also have that been been well here from the next side okay. to yes. uh, answer uh, the questions. And, uh, I will just make a few more brief yes. brief remarks. Uh, and, uh, well, I will just make a few specific details. Brief brief remarks. And, 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 uh, and, uh, and drill down this what specific with specific detail. Uh, uh, as we said, we have the MSIs. We uh, uh, went through a process uh, as as we uh, as government we, uh, went through a process as as we as government and business should always do is we went through that process. Fair deal out there in the market. We were satisfied. So we went through that process. Blue Shield, especially as they were satisfied with the response. Pharmacies and Blue Shield, especially as they were satisfied in our plan. Uh, their pharmacy, uh, their, their uh, medicine cost in our plan. Sound business decision uh, that it would continue to remain uh, completely uh, uh, sound business decision uh, and continue to remain. No uh, benefit changes other than uh, I think we did change. No did uh, benefit the, uh, changes other than I think we did change. Deductible did for disability the, uh, insurance, which was a fairly small the deductible uh, for disability uh, insurance, insurance, which was a, a fairly a small. That was the, that was uh, the only change. I think one of the things that we really want people that was that was the only change. I think one of the things that we really want to know is our project about is that it's safe. 
benefits liability over the last uh, couple of years and going uh, forward. Benefits liability over the last five years. Couple of years, couple of years is kind of different about briefly how this is trending. I'll ask our finance director. Uh, it's kind of different about briefly how this is trending. Um, this year we budgeted uh, absolutely about. Um, this year we budgeted under what we budgeted for about um, ten Communications that we provide the megahertz radio system, um, and if there was some savings, the megahertz radio system, what can um, and if there was some savings, the question was simply, what can we do for what can we do? You weigh in on that. Come back on the case. No version of that. I'll give you a little brief. You weigh in on that. Approved by the members in that category. I'll give you a fire EMS. Approved by the members in that category. Fire EMS. Public radio system. Parks. Thirty-two percent. Along with transportation uh, information that was disseminated to the public, never completely uh, information that was disseminated to the public, never radio completely and the radio system term, public radio system approval project, digital radio system term, which was countywide approval project by the BSC. In the referendum, the term countywide digital radio system. So I have a pine in the referendum, essentially, and I got to say this in two parts. So I have a question was presented essentially, and I got to say this in two parts. One of the questions. Was the question was what does the local radio system mean? Well, one of the questions I said, what does the local radio system mean? Devices, and I said, well, you couldn't just buy a device or system because I would be providing the public the system that they thought was them because I would be providing the public the system that they thought was an upgrade device throughout all the time. You could buy additional radios or upgrade radios throughout all the time. As it pertains to save, so long as you act because these are broken down, as it pertains to save, when percentage, because these are broken really down, don't know generic how that fits in that category. Percentage. There's not a technical you really don't know how that fits in that category. There's not a technical but savings. But if you collect out, you don't know what 32 can do for Jack of what is. But if you collect out, you don't know what 32 percent of what is. You don't have that number yet. 32 percent, you got to fire EMS and spend down with the system. 
the project to project to require calls. EMS and public radio was that, So if you project that my call, there's some projected was that, that, you can hold that my song and some and to you figure out do we have you can hold the that actual projections to until you figure out do we have I'm sure the end finding actual projections to try to get us. And I'm sure we could find that sooner. sooner. I mean, if we see we're way ahead, boss, or we're way behind, we do it a little bit sooner. If we see we're way ahead, or we're way behind, and you couldn't can't violate, violate some categories, categories within your own, the other categories, categories, and you couldn't violate some percentage rules, rules within your own. But the public radio system is not hiring you as a public radio system. But the public radio system is not limited by anything the entire county to the public. In fact, it was used countywide digital radio systems. In fact, it was used countywide digital radio systems to actually determine the valuation of the whole radio system. By the time we I'm comfortable that you spend money public radio on additional stuff that communicates. I'm comfortable that you spend money on additional stuff that communicates because it's part of the interlocking system of communication. Public safety broader conversation, we recognize you can't use within a public safety vehicle, there is public safety vehicle that comes along with that. But within a public safety vehicle, there is equipment, car that comes along with that. And so the cost of the 40 cent worth of equipment, car, I'm saying we can now say that. So we got 40 cents worth of equipment. We're saying communication is now that say that just fire EMS. What we're saying to the sheriff is that does that mean just fire EMS? Marks does it mean the sheriff? What does that mean? Equipment, any animal county control equipment, marks, equipment, what is that? Mean? Any county vehicle, uh, uh, parks and rides, EMS, uh, animal, animal control, control, anything that's owned by parks and rides, and I want to say about animal control, anything that's owned by the radio equipment. And I want to say about the equipment, we're talking about only radio equipment, not other equipment, not things that actually do not flash inside of the central hub, but it's things that actually communicate within the central hub of what's described as a countywide digital system. All right, now I want to move that forward again, just to your point, your point, realize that you got a category. That's all I'm wanting. You're forecasting your point, like you got a category. But we're spending we're fast. Forecasting we're spending today versus not this way. Resetting every. We're spending fast. Time. We're, we're spending some today versus we disagree. Resetting every. It's not a period of time. And I believe at some point twice a year we get a reset on the list based on quarterly. Least 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 twice a year. What we've done is locked it in the on the list from day one recast, and we just sort of assume what we've done is locked it in the we agree day one recast, and we just sort of assume we'll meet everything we've done for. Can we? You almost have to. You think it's going to be based on the You almost have to. I think our scholars should have that data panel already in the book. I think our scholars should have that data panel already in the book. And so finance, maybe we all get to go offline. Yes, sir. And we have a spreadsheet conversation. Thank you. Just one thing. Thank you. Just one thing. Thank